with the weather that Clifford was telling us about. <laughs> Not sure. But let's check in with Mark Patrick, who's in Muncie at the new University Arena. Mark, you think the weather's going to hamper that crowd tonight? Hello, Mark. 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 Hello, Mark. <laughs> All right. Hey, let's come on back here. Mark. All right, there he is. Gosh, what did I say? What a game last night at the Assembly Hall between number oh, Mark four, Patrick huh? and Dick Hunsaker at the arena. Mark. Yeah, Coach Hunsaker and I were just talking, Freddie. You know, I spent uh, my fair amount of time here at the Ball State campus, and, uh, Coach, we think we've decided just past the blizzard of 78 is the biggest event ever here on campus. But, you know, I wasn't here, but I heard about that blizzard in 78. But I'd have to say this is uh, the moment here that everyone's anticipated, and, uh, you know, it's really an exciting time. I don't think I've been as nervous since the NCAA tournament. Ivan Gratz, our sports photography, if we would get a, get a shot of the student section that is just behind us. Now, the students aren't quite as close as they were over in Irving Gymnasium. You know, Mark, not quite. I mean, there's some distance now. But for a, uh, for a palace or an arena type, I think they've kept it pretty tight. And it's going to be interesting to see with this 10-story roof if the sound is absorbed up there or bounces right back to the court. It's great to play in the opening game, one of the real rivals for Ball State, Miami of Ohio. Now, you guys aren't overlooking the Redskins because of the opening of the arena tonight, are you? Well, you know, it, it's been one of those situations where very unusual circumstances in conference to make a move in facilities, and we've only practiced here three or four times. But I wouldn't say we're really on top of our game right now, and the emotions, I think it comes at a real good time to play Miami, which I think is probably playing the best basketball of any team in the Mid-American. Well, listen, good luck to you here tonight. What a fantastic facility it is. Of course, a sellout tonight. And people are, are getting on snow. We saw people on snow plows. We saw people on snowmobiles coming into the arena here tonight. It's going to be fantastic. We'll have highlights coming up for you at 11 o'clock on News 8. Freddie? All righty, Mark and Dick, thank you very much. Well, the Pacers lost in double overtime last night to the Washington Bullets. WIPB Sports presents Ball State University Basketball. Tonight from University Arena in Muncie, Indiana, the Cardinals host the Redskins of Miami University. This WIPB Basketball telecast is made possible in part by grants from Defer, Moran, Hanley, Radcliffe, and Reed attorneys. Knatzer Heating and Cooling. Pizza King. Remax Realty Plus. Indiana Michigan Power Company. Family Vision Care, Bassett Pontiac GMC Truck, Ross Supermarkets Hardware and Pharmacy, French Tex Cleaners, and Wendy's Restaurants of Muncie. basketball fans Al Rant, Tom Dobbs and Oren Olinger and are we excited this is the opening game of the new University Arena some 11,500 fans have packed in here on a terrible winter night outside but they haven't let that deter them from coming to the opening game of the new Ball State University Arena Miami's Redskins will do battle with the Cardinals Tom, uh, the last time these two teams played, war broke out in more ways than one. <laughs> well, you sure did, Al. We really did not have a lot of success over at Miami that night, and luckily we weren't on the air with too, too many homes that night, I don't believe either, because uh, Ball State got beat almost 30 points over there that night. 
We said uh, bombs were being laid in many different places. It was a unique January, to say the least. This facility is incredible. For those of you who cannot be with us, we trust that you'll come at other evenings during a number of home games that will take place throughout the remainder of this season. As we kick in for 1992, what a way to open up. Tom and Orrin, it, uh, it's an arena that uh, should do the university quite proud. Well, I think one thing, Al, they really have done it first class. I think that's the thing that concern a lot of people had. And there's no question in my mind that this will basically parallel any particular arena in this uh, state and many of the arenas in the Mid-American Conference. This is much better than OU, which seats a few more people. But I think there's going to be that closeness here. The fans are going to be able to get in the game very similar to what they did at Irving Gym, and I think that's exciting. Orrin? Well, I'll tell you what, now, my thoughts, you know, we've been at this about 10 years, and we've had some exciting moments over at Irving Gym. One that really sticks out of my mind was the Ray McCollum when he stole the ball to steal the ball and went for the slam dunk to be the leading scorer in the MAC. But I tell you, I'm really looking forward to tonight. I'm looking forward to this new arena right here. These two teams come in rather evenly matched. Or take us through the statistics. Well, when you look at the field goal percentage, Miami's really got an edge on us there overall with 47 to about 45 percent. And Miami is a good 3.3 3, uh, shooting team, 43 percent to our 34. From the free throw standpoint, Ball State's been edging up, I've been noticing. Getting closer to that 7%. Miami's not a very good free throw shooting for team, shooting about 64% to R68. Points scored per game, Ball State, you know, surprisingly, they've been, their average is up this year from last year so far, leading uh, Miami 75 to about 68. Points allowed per game, here's a big difference. There's not much difference between those schools. What I mean, a big difference is Miami has turned into be a defensive team, and in previous years, they weren't that good defensively. Right now, they're about even Steven. Team stats, rebounds per game, Ball State doing much better than Miami. We hope that holds for, to, for tonight. And turnovers per game, Ball State doing a better job this year also of protecting the ball. So, Al, in some areas, we're pretty even. In some areas, each one of us has an edge on each one. One of the nice advantages of being here at the new University Arena is, Tom, there are scoreboards everywhere, and uh, they're all at various levels, so that gives uh, all the fans an opportunity to tell time and score. Exactly, Al. There are four well-positioned uh, scoreboards in each corner, plus the huge scoreboard over the middle of the floor, so really there's no excuse not to know the time, the foul on each player, and any information you need to know, and that's really excellent, I think, because the fans are in the game. It's going to help keep the fans in the game. And they say the PA system is unequaled. You can uh, almost hear a pin drop by putting it over the PA system here. So everybody should be well excited about opening game at University Arena. And what a great rivalry, Tom, to bring in here for this opening match. Well, that Miami can come in here and really be a spoiler tonight, Al. And that's one of the things that Coach Dick Hunsaker was worried about as I talked with him a couple days ago. You know, they could play the spoiler role very easily. Well, let's take a look at the starting lineups as they get ready to be introduced. And they will introduce them in alternating order, as they usually do. You see them on your screen right now, and we'll take a look at those uh, players as they come out to the center circle. Scott Ballou, a 6'1 junior. Ballou will start at one guard. At the other guard, or one guard for the Cardinals, Jeff Robbins will start. Robbins is 6'2", and he's from Muncie Southside. Mercurio, Jamie Mercurio, 6'3", watch him, an excellent ball player, excellent ball handler, averaging nine and a half points a game for Miami. Mike Spicer starting for the guard position on the Cardinals, so it'll be Spicer and Robbins in the backcourt. Ballou and Mercurio in the backcourt for Miami. In the middle, Big John McKenna, 6'10". He's a sophomore for the Redskins. And Big Bill Gillis for the Cardinals. He's a junior, 6'7", out of Indianapolis. At forward for Miami, Craig Michaels, 6'6". He is a junior. Michaels averaging 8.5 points a game. David Brose, 6'9". From Illinois, will start for the Cardinals. He is a sophomore. Mike Williams will be the final starting forward for Miami. Williams is 6'6 and a senior. And Chandler Thompson, 
Standing 6-4 from Muncie Central. He's a senior. Will start at the final forward position for the Cardinals. So, Tom, as uh, we had, you and I had said earlier, uh, before we took the air, there might be a starting uh, lineup change. Why is that happening? Well, what's uh, happening is uh, David Scott, who's the leading scorer for Miami, comes in off the bench. He always has. He's uh, one of their top 20 scorers in all time over at Miami, but he comes in off the bench, never starts. And the coach's philosophy here is to bring Keith Stallings in off the bench at the time that Dave Scott comes in to match up with him. So this is why Jeff Robbins is starting instead of Stallings. They want to match that Scott situation when he comes in the game with Let's Keith Stallings. Let's check that lineup. You'll see Michaels and Williams at the forwards. McKinney in the middle. I think McKinney is 6'10". Ballou and Mercurio at the guards. For the Cardinals, Bros and Thompson at the, uh, well, actually, uh, yeah, Bros and Thompson at the forward positions. Gillis in the pivot and Robbins and Spicer at the guards. I was going to put Thompson back at guard, but they moved Thompson down low. Our officials, Michael Stocker, Mike Sechrist, and Mike Senzeri. And when we yell out Mike, they're all three going to stand up. Key to this game, Al, I think is going to be which team can really get their inside game going because both teams are perimeter playing teams and it's going to be the team that really can get it down on the blocks and, and beat the other team in that area. We are right in front of the student section and the students traditionally at Ball State University are well in the ball game to start. Chandler Thompson up, it doesn't go. Tipped around and out of bounds and give it to Miami. Well, Good they, shot by Thompson, just couldn't bag it. They practiced that play uh, about 10 minutes yesterday in practice, Al, and that was perfect position, and Chandler just missed it, but a great move on Chandler to clear out the opposite side. Well, the Cardinals show that they can move inside. Chandler just could not get it to drop, so the Cardinals will go on defense. Well, the Cardinals... They're a motion offensive uh, team, Al, very similar to Ball State. However, they only have two people inside. They run a 3-2 motion offense, and they this is really pictures and mirrors Indiana University the way they run their motion offense. Miami working the perimeter, trying to find a way inside. Mike Spicer deflects the ball. He's going to bring it down. Whirl around. Oh, it nice. goes. <laughs> it went. Whew. Give it to Spicer. What, what a unique first basket in the new university arena. I mean, that was unique, people. <laughs> oh, it sure was. Did they give it to Spicer? I think they gave it to Spicer, yeah, even though if I think didn't, If they didn't give it to Spicer, then it was... Uh, Gillis, probably, wasn't it? I think somebody... Oh, yeah, it hand. was Gillis. Yeah, but I think they might have given it to Spicer. Could not tell if Gillis touched it. It was in the cylinder. I think they might have yeah. had to call offensive right. goaltending. Yeah. Two points. No, home run time. Home run time. Mercurio. Number 15, Jamie Mercurio. I tell you what, he's really improved, Al. He's been there for a long time. He's a senior, but this year he's really come into his own. So it's 3-2. Miami up on top, and the Cardinals will work the perimeter. Spicer looking inside. They again, take it back outside. Bros out there. Again, the difference here in their offense is, is that Ball State has one player inside where Miami will have two. Bill Gillis down low and got the two-bagger. Cardinals go up four to three. Well, we talked about you open up that outside game if you can get the ball going inside and get some scoring inside early. 11,500 people. Looks like most of them are here. The weather is terrible outside. There are a few empty chairs. Go but only to. because they just couldn't get here. Foul on the inside. Jeff Robbins is called for the touch. They say he fouled Mercurio. Common foul. Cardinals will get the ball out of bounds or the uh, Redskins will get the ball out of bounds. 18-16, just underway. Ball State inaugurating the new University Arena. There's a three up. No, he calls it a two up in the air, and the Cardinals will rebound. Mercurio had the shot, didn't get it. Cardinals get it, and Mike Spicer brings it across. He's being guarded closely by Scott Ballou. David Bros back to Robbins. Robbins can pump the three. Bros looks inside the Gillis. Back to Spicer. Bros will take the two. Got it. David Bros can hit that shot. He's got a shoot it more often now. I think that's the only problem. <clears throat> Cardinals up 6-3. Miami, one basket, one shot. Michaels on the outside. Look inside. Cardinals and Miami, you can see their defensive averages just outstanding. Two of the top seven teams in the country out as far as their scoring defensive average. Wide open. Shot is good. Number 45, John McKenna. The big guy came outside. <clears throat> Well, this is a thing. It's going to be kind of a battle of the big guys. Uh, Miami will bring their big people out a lot on the floor. That'll be the difference between Miami and Ball State as far as motion game. 
We've got a whistle underneath, and we've got, looks like, an offensive foul on the Cardinals. Let's find out who it's on. A legal screen on David Bros, I believe. Chandler Thompson is Chandler. called for the foul, illegal screen, and the Cardinals will turn that one over. Now watch uh, Miami. They really set some high screens. They'll bring their big people out on the floor a lot, and that's going to give Ball State's defensive big men some problems. Ooh, Spicer intercepts again. Two cross on court to Robbins. He'll take it back to Spicer. Nice play. Doesn't oh, get oh. it. Rebound. Gillis, oh, no good. Nice two-man play that time. Just didn't finish. Could not go. The rims are tight. Tom, you, yeah, you exactly. told me that earlier. Well, they really are. Watch practice yesterday, and they really are tight. Miami on the outside, looking inside. On the year, Miami is averaging 67 points a game. The Cardinals a little bit better, 74. Miami has really uh, slowed down their offensive pace out since they picked that up on defense. Air year. ball. Cardinals get it. Spicer, long pass. There it is. Nice job by Chandler. Nice control. He could have dunked it, but he had nice control that time. Good decision by Chandler. Nice assist on Spicer's case, recognizing that pass early. Right. He was open earlier, and Spice kind of waited a little uh, a time there, but he still got it to him. Good Joe B. Wright, the coach of the Redskins, is discussing that with the Redskins. Let's take a look on at that. It. Again, Mike just kind of threaded the needle right over the outstretched hand of Michaels there. And Chandler did a nice job of uh, controlling himself. Michaels went over the top, and Chandler held on to it, got the two, has a chance for a three-point play. Substitutions into the ball game. Coming in, Cedric Van Leer for Miami, who played with Chandler Thompson at Central High School. Van Leer really hasn't played that much this year, Al. He only averages about nine minutes a game. In fact, he's probably number nine or ten on their roster as far as time played. So Van Leer at guard will bring it down, and Spicer is all over him. Mercurio looking inside, trying to find a way to beat the Cardinals' defense. There's a three going up. It spins out. Rebound. Tipped around. Chandler Thompson gets it. He'll put up a two. And Thompson puts the Cardinals on top, 11 to 5. Well, you like to see Chandler with that kind of confidence in his shooting. That's what he needs to get him off the block, get him going. On the outside, Michaels. Bags a three. Well, Michael seems like an Orn. He's been here forever, and he's oh, only yeah. a junior. He's a freshman. Yeah. Mac Player of the Year two years ago. He's an excellent player. Great, Great miss, student, too. He's a wonderful right. student. We Great missed student. David Hall coming in for the Cardinals, who has just become eligible in the last several games. He'll try the shot. Doesn't get it. Rebound to Michaels. Hall can really pump it up when he gets hot. He's got good range for the Cardinals at 6'6". Six, six. He may be the best pure shooter on the Ball State team out. Miami looks inside again. They trail 11 to 8 on a couple of threes by Miami. 15 minutes in the first half to go. We've got a foul underneath, and it'll be called on. Let's see. Looks like Chandler, Chandler Thompson. Yeah, that's two on Chandler early. <laughs> so Chandler will come out. Let's here's take a look at the again. replay. And all Chandler had to do was he just didn't get there in time. He's got to get over and use that baseline as an extra defensive man. Step your, put your foot right on that uh, line, and there's no way he can go around you. Thompson out, and coming in will be Sylvester. Well, you can't let this kid shoot Kramer. No, no. Him. He's been playing forever, too, it seems like. Right. Hall on the layup, doesn't get it, but he's fouled. Cardinals with a good fast break, and Tom, it looks like the Cardinals are going to run tonight. Well, the transition game has been very important, and Ball State really doesn't look to do that, but if you give it to them, they'll take it. And that's one of the things that Miami has done very well all year long. In fact, one of the keys to the game tonight is for Ball State to be able to stop Miami's transition game. And here's a replay on that. It's nice feed over to Hall from Spicer. And again, uh, the defensive man was definitely moving. Michaels was moving that time. So Hall will be at the free throw line. Averaging 12 and a half points a game. Got the first. For the year at the free throw line, Hall shooting 60%. Want to say a big hello to Joe Carr, who is uh, recuperating in Ball Hospital, Tom. Yeah, the new ticket manager at Ball Hospital, and uh, hope he gets well soon and He's gets back. He, sorry, he had to miss this. He's been very instrumental in ticket distribution. He's uh, on the road to recovery, but the guys in the ticket office, Joe, want me to tell you that uh, things are working real well. In fact, so well. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, nice. Good. Nice, nice inside move. Gillis on a hard rebound, and Spicer comes out. Spicer's all over the floor. Spicer really directing traffic. Mike and Wing. he's fouled quickly by Van Leer. 
Mike's playing a very inspired game tonight. You know, one of the key things talking to Coach Ron Hecklinski today about the team coming out, the emotional factor should be here. I mean, there's everything going for oh, them yes. in the world, and we've seen this team many times this year really not have that emotional factor going for them, but I think they do tonight. Third team foul on Miami. There are three on the Cardinals. That Inst foul was on number 24. Instant offense Bentley. just came in. Now. Now, David Scott David just Scott. came in, and, of course, then Keith Stallings just came in for Ball State to match up, and that'll be the big uh, defensive matchup. Ball on the shot. Got it. You know, nobody faces up better, I think, Tom, to the basket, and Hall has hang time with that shot till he aims it and fires it. Mm -hmm. Three on the way, Mercurio. and three down. Mercurio again. Well, he has really improved. He had a lot of potential with a freshman, but really didn't show up for a couple years, and it looks like he's really coming into his own his senior year. They'll have to deny that three to Mercurio because he's getting open, and he's been accurate tonight. Well, they're an excellent three shooting team. Stalling now. is fouled. Foul by Scott, as Scott and Stalling have drawn each other for defense, and Stalling will go to the free throw line for two. Here's a replay on that, and you see, nice move, good, not quite uh, straight, uh, straight up to the basket, but uh, again, he went up strong and got hit from the back. So Stalling at the free throw line, shooting 76% on the year, got the first. You know, there's a fine line, Tom, between between being excited and emotionally into the game and getting too much emotion right. in the game. And then I know the coaches were worried about how they would handle tonight opening the arena. Boy, it bounced around and just Boy, wouldn't that, fall. That shows you how tight those rims are. Mm -hmm. They would have rolled in over at Irving Gym. I think I shot on those rims at the fair <laughs> last summer. <laughs> You ever try to put those balls in the basket out there? Not anymore. Impossible. <laughs> Hall all over Mercurio now. Michaels with the ball in his hand. Sylvester's got him guarded. Cardinals up by five, 16 to 11. Ball State doing a nice job of defense right now. Good help and recover. And Mercurio outside again. Doesn't get it. Goes up on top, and it'll give it to the Cardinals. Boy, he wanted to shoot it, and he waited patiently and finally made his move and fired it up there. Again, right now, I think Ball State is really making Miami play the way they want to play. They're controlling things from the defensive end. Uh, Spice kind of got lost there. And Ball knocked out of bounds, and Cedric Van Leer tried to make the play, yeah. but could not pull it off. For the year, Miami mm -hmm. shooting a very credible 43% from three-point range. They're second in the league, Al, and, and they're not afraid to shoot it. They spot up. They look for them. They've got a lot of good three-point shooters. That's, that's why I was mentioning about the inside game. Uh, they really don't have a lot of inside game going, and I think that's going to be one of the keys tonight. The Ball State and Miami very much mirror one another in that respect. Jamie Matthews comes in for Spicer, who takes a rest. Matthews, a junior at 5'10", from New Washington, Indiana. He can run the floor very well. Inside, nice Gillis collect. off the glass, couldn't get it. Going to be knocked out of bounds and give it to the Cardinals. They're really doubling up a little bit on Bill in there. He's going to have to recognize that, maybe dump the ball back out to somebody being open. But Bill did collect very good that time and went up very strong. Michaels will go out and coming into the ball game for Miami, number 23. That's Mike Williams. Back in. Matthews looking in, trying to find somebody, and he throws it away. No, it's okay. Nope, it's okay over there. had control. Exactly. So it was not over and back. Matthews gets it. Miami playing a little tighter on defense as they're cranking it up. They trail by five. The Cardinals have them at 12.58, 16 to 11. Opening match in the University Arena. Stalling on the stutter step. Couldn't decide and turns it over. That's a good observation now. Miami will turn it up once in a while. They'll really pressure you out on the floor and push you out on the floor a little bit farther. And they vary that. Sometimes they get a little soft on their defense. So Miami on the offense looks to cut the lead. They've bagged a couple threes already. Now you notice where McKinney is. He's all the way out on the floor. He's their, he's their middle man. He's their big man. And they, the big guys really get out on the floor a lot. Nice back cut. Inside, Scott. Oh. Mercurio nice with a good pass, and Scott laid it in. Beautiful back cut by Scott. He is an offensive-minded player, and he moves well without the ball. 16-3. Hall up. Rejected. Not a good shot selection that time by David. Mercurio off to Van Leer. He'll square up and fire three, and he got it, and our game is tied. Now that's that kind of semi-transition now we were talking about. Miami will come down, they'll spot up on the threes, and you got to get back and cover. So Matthews inside the paint. It's going to be knocked around. Give it to Miami as Matthews tried to feed it off to Gillis. Gillis could not control it. 
And we'll have Steve Turner come in for Big Bill, and he'll sit down, and Chandler Thompson with two fouls will come off the bench, and he'll come back in. Sitting down will be David Hall. Dave Bros just came in, making a lot of substitutions there. Now and Ball State, back. The, the last two times down the floor really have not been in control offensively. They really have kind of forced things, and right. really surprised me because they haven't played that way at all up to that time. Cardinals trying to force things to happen instead of in the natural sequence letting things happen. So, well, they let them back in a the game. They had a 16-11 lead, and now it's a tie ball game. Coach Hunsaker will has inserted the regulars back in, and he'll try to get control. Van Leer at the point. Matthews on him. Miami being very patient. Well, they are a very patient team, and they run that offense very well. Uh, Ball State's doing a nice job of taking them out, some of those back screens. and Eight and seconds on the nice shot clock. Right now. Scott with the ball. He'll fire on Thompson. Doesn't get it. And McKenna gets it back. It run, time runs out. Time runs out because the ball did not did hit, not the, hit rim. the rim. Uh, hit the side of the basket. Hit the side That's of the basket. Call. Doesn't count. Good call. The uh, the clocks are the shot clocks are on top of the baskets along with the game clock, and that allows Tom the players to see exactly what situation they're facing. Well, there's no question about you yeah. know what what time you have. There's no question about that. I like that. That's a real nice addition. Jamie Matthews brings it across. Van Leer knocks it out of bounds for Miami, and the Cardinals will retain possession. Game might, is tied at 16. Might want to say one other thing, Al, that they have that you don't see on a lot of clocks, and they have the game clock up there along with the shot clock, so they always know the situation that's going on, and you don't see that everywhere if you look around the country. And these are the newest type of clocks that they have out. Well, we have a full house. Virtually, uh, it was a total sellout, so all the tickets were sold, and because of some of the bad weather, some people could not make the long trek from a fur piece away. Mike Spicer back in, and Matthews is out, and Cardinals on offense trying to break the tie. Miami's Redskins, and the Ball State Cardinals. Thompson on the outside doesn't get it. Rebound to Miami. Oops, to the, yep, oh, to oh. the Miami, almost to the Cardinals. Tried to get it back. Number three in for Miami, Derek Gross. Lost track of him as he came in. Came in. He's should, the, they, should say it's Derek Cross. As yeah, I one of their freshmen. They've got a couple of freshmen to play a little bit out. He's one of their new freshman kids. Tied up at 16. Ten and a half to go in the first half. Ball State in Miami. A foul on Spicer. Well, that's interesting. He took the freshman and tried to match up on the senior on a one-on-one -on -one clear out. He is quick. Fourth team foul on the Cardinals and four on Miami. Nobody in particular trouble as far as team goes. Chandler Thompson, however, has two of those fouls. So Thompson checks out and Robbins comes in for Thompson. Oh, he travels. Scott travels. Scott lost control. Not happy about the call, but he did travel, and so the Cardinals will get the ball. They'll have it out under their own basket. These two teams uh, are in the top seven in scoring defense in the country. Ball State ranks fifth in the country in scoring defense, while Miami is seventh in the country. Stalling, got it. Keith Stalling breaks the tie for the Cardinals, and more debris comes out on the, from the fans, and it's coming from the Cardinals' side. And we realize that if that were to continue, the officials have the option of calling a technical foul on the home team. So we hope that does not continue. Ladies and gentlemen, we remind you that NCAA and Pan-American Conference rules prohibit the throwing of foreign objects. And an announcement to that effect is being made now. So the crowd has been warned. If there's a technical call, Tom, the crowd will be charged with it. And they'll have to bear that burden for the rest of the season. Oh, I think they got the message. Mercurio on the outside. Robbins with him. Again, Ball State doing a real good job once they get set in the half-court defense down there. The problem has been in a little bit of a semi-transition. They're not uh, really catching up on spotting up on some people. Well, we've got a timeout on the floor, and our score is Ball State 18, Miami 16. From University Arena in Muncie, Indiana, you're watching Ball State Cardinal Basketball. Indiana Michigan Power Company. Working together as neighbors to improve quality of life in Muncie and surrounding areas.
supplying electricity needs, services and programs to homes, businesses, and industries. Actively involved in affairs of the community, helping our community prosper and grow. Indiana Michigan Power, your hometown electric company, supporting public television programs. There's our score. Cardinals lead at 18 to 16 in a tight uh, defensive battle, but Orrin, uh, Miami's shooting those threes like they knew what they were doing. Well, you know, we talked earlier but that they are such a good uh, three-point uh, shooting team, and they've already had four. Jamie Mercurio's already had two during this first half. Ball State's taken 13 shots to Miami's 11, but as I said, Miami's had four three-point shots. Cardinals uh, break out. The cheerleaders are trying to finish their cheer. And the officials would like to start the game, so the cheerleaders are moving off. 9.52 remain in the first half. And the Cardinals are on top by two at 18 to 16. They were up 16 to 11. Miami got themselves back into it with some threes and some good defense. Well, so far, defense has really dictated this game, Al, and it doesn't surprise us at all. Again, you alluded to it, and I did too, as far as two top defensive teams in the country. Spicer fell down. Mercurio got the shot off, but it was off, and Robbins got the rebound as the Cardinals are working the defensive boards quite well right now. Chandler Thompson is out with two fouls. They do not want him to come up with number three. Stalling in the free throw line, doesn't get it. Steve Turner had a shot at the rebound, but couldn't get it, knocked it out. And Miami will get the ball. And the freshman was knocked down, Cross. He seems to be okay. Coming into the lineup for Miami, number four, Jamie Mahaffey. David Hall comes back in for the Cardinals. Stalling will go out. Well, David Scott went out, so Stallings is going on. It looks like they were going to play that little matchup tonight. So Miami on offense, trailing the Cardinals by two. And Cross working on Spicer. Wisdom versus a brand new kid in the, in the block. Michaels on the outside, looks for a way inside. Hall will not let him have it. Mercurio underneath. Good move. Yeah. Give him two. Number 23, well, Mike Williams on the move. And good. Turner gets the foul. We haven't heard much from Mike Williams tonight, but he is one of their leaders, Al, one of their better players. He's probably the best, best athlete on the team, and he just simply makes a nice back cut here, and Steve Turner just doesn't get over in time to get there. I mean, he'll kill you on that kind of a back cut on the baseline. So Williams will go to the free throw line, averaging 10 points a game. Miami has two and double figures with Scott, their leading scorer. No good on the free throw, and Miami, who on the year shoots 63%. We said that earlier at the right. pregame show. Miami, not a good free throw shooting team, has missed a couple tonight. They have a negative, Al. That's what it is. Cardinals almost with a turnover as the ball came our way. What if we could shoot it from here when it comes here? Tom could. No. <laughs> no. I could shoot it, but... <laughs> Hall squares up and fires, doesn't go. That's Rebound his shot. His shot. to Miami. By the way, Turner came out on that... that exchange, and Bill Gillis came back in for the Cardinals at the pivot position. So the Cardinals have Bros and Gillis down low. Up for the shot, number four, Mahaffey. Gillis took it off. It didn't touch anything. 8-12, and we are tied at 18. Hall on the outside won't go. Gillis with the rebound. He's going to put it back up. Nice Got job. It. Boy, beautiful ball control with a hand that time. He just had a nice control of the ball with a hand. Bill Gillis last year could not have made that move. Mahaffey's a freshman, and Tom, he just could not contest that. Mahaffey at 6'6", and Gillis, and they say at 6'7", but he plays taller. Williams on the drive. It doesn't go, but a foul on the inside, He's and Gillis quick. will get charged. He uh, is see, right? quick. He is, we have not heard his name much tonight, but, boy, when he gets rolling, he's the big catalyst, I think. He could really get them going. Here's a replay, and he just basically beats Bill Gillis. There's no way that Bill can guard him, very honestly. He needs help, and that's where you got to get some help side defense over, and nobody was there that time to help Bill out. Going out for Miami is uh, Jamie Mahaffey. And Williams gets the free throw. Williams on the year at the free throw line, shooting 63%. That matched the team's output. 
Senior from Dayton, Ohio. Misses number two, and Mike Spicer with the rebound. You know, about uh, midpoint in this uh, early season, Tom, Coach Hunsaker said he needed more guard rebounds. Tonight, they've accomplished that. Yeah, we got a lot of high rebounds with these tight rims, too, Al. Three on the way. Yes. Jeff Robbins. That's good to see. Jeff's been a little quiet the last few games, Tom. That's right. good to see him open up there. Yeah, he, he can, he can shoot their, him out there if he squares up. With their first three of the evening, and it's 23-19. They're up by four. 7-11 to go. Miami patient inside. Nice cut. Nice cut and a long rebound out of bounds. Michaels had the shot high off the rim and it bounced out. Came off quick. Coming back in, number 21-24 for Miami. Vernon Crump for the first time. And Cedric Van Leer back in for Miami. So Miami rotating the players in and out, Tom, trying they, to give them plenty of rest. They have nine or ten people. They're very deep, Al, so that, that's not surprising. Uh, these two teams mirror each other so much. It's amazing. Yeah, that's one area right there, and defense is another area, and the offense is another area. Very similar. You'll see a lot of the same things on both ends of the floor tonight. Robbins takes it off the glass, doesn't get it. Who's got it? Hall got it. Now that's what they need right there. They need some more pounding those offensive boards in particular. David Hall moves the lead to 6, 25, 19, 6.30 to go, first half. Cardinals and Redskins from University Arena. Oh, can't let him spoil oh, he, wanted no. to, he wanted <laughs> to shoot it. He didn't get it. And again, oh. foul on the inside. Number yep. 21, Vernon Crump took it strong to the basket. And Bill Gillis got the foul. Well, again, we got, we got some mismatches happening out there, Al. And uh, here's a replay on that. And, you know, Vernon's pretty quick. And... And again, Bill's got to move the feet a little bit more. He's just not in position at all and wasn't getting any help either defensively, but Bill's got to move the feet a little bit better. So that is foul number two on Bill Gillis. Sylvester will come off the bench and he'll take Gillis's place. That means Bros will move to the pivot. Hall and Sylvester will be at the forwards. Take that back. Stalling is in as Scott is in. And so Scott will stay at a forward. Free throw up and Boy. bounces out. It is their Achilles heel, isn't well, it? He's, I mean, it really he, is. For the year, he's only shooting 50%, so uh, let's hope he doesn't get that on a... I hope he yeah. keeps that roll going. Well, their, their best free throw shooter is uh, David Scott, and he, I think it's around 72%, yeah. so that's not real great. Next one up, and it is good. So the lead goes to five. 25 for the Cardinals and 20 for Miami. 6-14 to go in the first half. Spicer, Hall... Hall travels. Now, that's one thing, David, you know, he hasn't played for a while, but he gets in a hurry once in a while. Again, not letting the offense uh, help him out there. Miami with the ball out of bounds, right, uh, right in front of our table position here. David and Scott's Mercurio back. will bring it across. David Scott's back. Keith Stallings back in the game. And they're matching up. Not that they like each other so well. No. They just uh, play a pretty good country game of basketball. 30 seconds on the shot clock. 5.52 to go in this first half. The Cardinals up by five. Van Leer with the ball. Traveling. Vernon Crump tried to make the move, but he thought about it too late. Moved the feet and a turnover Miami. Well, Ball State's not giving Miami some of the things they want. They're not get, getting number one. A lot of the screen set real well. Ball State's doing a nice job of forcing them out of that. There are seven team fouls on the Cardinals, so Miami's in the one and bonus. Sylvester on the drive, doesn't go. Nice, nice drive. Rebound to Miami. Boy, it bounced around like a tennis ball. Crump with the ball, pulls it back uh, inside. McKenna, cross court. Scott will fire. Well, you Scott gets it. <laughs> Just two. You could chalk that one up. He had daylight and uh, had a step and a half on his defensive man. So Scott bags it. And the lead is down to 3, 25 to 22. Hall on the move, no, throws it up, no, a prayer. No. Again, he's trying to force things within the offense. Didn't have a chance of going. Scott into McKenna. No, that's Crump. 
Nice Intercepted. Nice we got Steve. a three on two give break. It give it Where's up. Where's it going to go? Uh, he waited too long. Hall gets it. Got to give the ball up. Jamal. Yeah, Jamal three Sylvester on not used to running the fast <laughs> break and being the point man. <laughs> yeah, they but we break. got the two and it's 27 22. Four and a half to go. First half. Cardinals on the lead. Scott makes a move. Nice Stalling shot. knocks whoa, it out whoa, of bounds. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, they, they should check that. David Scott, he's the one that really initiated that. Stalling just did a nice defensive job, and Scott got a little hot. Well, the players discuss it, and There's let's take a look at it. I think you'll see he's just doing a nice job. He could have got a foul there, hit the ball, and then Scott just comes down, a little extra activity that he doesn't need there. And that was kind of initiated by David. I'm not trying to be biased, but... Well, Miami retains possession on the knockout of bounds. <laughs> Scott gets the inbounds, and he throws it up. Doesn't go, but he gets the foul. So he'll have two at the free throw line, and he's not the man we want there. And Dick Hunsaker's over there saying he's clearing out with his arm, which he is doing. Scott will go to the free throw line and shooting very well, 72% on the year. Scott's a senior at 6'7". Played his basketball down in New Albany. Well, he's uh, Miami's John Havlicek, the, the famous right. six man. He has been in his whole career. I think he's only started four games in his whole career over there, and he's a senior. You get in a role, and you tend to continue to repeat, and success continues to promote that. He just he recently got passed Charlie Cole's scoring record at Miami. Yeah, I think he's a one of 20 now that scored 1,000 points in Miami's history. Scott Ballou came back in for the Redskins. And he's all over Mike Spicer. Ballou's got some speed. Rob Robbins it. off the mark. Knocked yeah. out of bounds. We've got a foul called on Brose. Yeah. Jeff brushed that shot a little bit. And uh, David Brose just a little overactive there trying to go for the ball. Another foul on the Cardinals. Miami with just four team fouls. Here's the replay on it. You can see just David just really didn't have a prayer in there. Uh, he's a very aggressive young man. He's going to go after that ball when it's on the floor. We well, have four minutes to go in this first half. Cardinals already up to nine team fouls, Tom. The next one puts it uh, automatic two shots at every foul. Yeah, and on the other side of the coin, Miami only has four fouls. And, uh, again, that's they're, they're doing a much better job tonight, yeah, two I think. To give. Uh, yeah, you're exactly right. Doing a much better job defensively as far as the uh, fouling situation. And this can hurt you down the road with four minutes to go. And then one, the next one, they get an automatic two. Guess who's back at the line? Mr. Scott. And Scott does not miss very often, hitting 31 of 43 on the year. You know, when Joby Wright went to Miami, we all wondered whether or not they're really going to tune up their defense like Indiana did. That's where Joby really had his tutorship under Bobby Knight. And I see it for the first time since he's been here this That's year. Right. There's yeah. no question this team is a 100% improved defensively. Jamal Sylvester with the ball back to Spicer. No good. Just, yeah. Good call. Good and a call. foul on number 41 who snuck in there, Matt Kramer. Didn't see Kramer come off the bench for Miami. But David Brose was just being active again, going after the ball, and Kramer really didn't check him right away, and David had a step on him. So that is the fifth team foul on Miami. They still have one more to give before the Cardinals go on the one and bonus. Spicer will inbounds from the outside. Cardinals have cooled off. Brose on the inside, taken away. Well, you bring that ball down, you become 5-1 very quickly from a 6-9. Mike Williams took it away very succinctly. Oh, oh, We've oh, got a oh. foul on Keith Stalling. Well, Keith got in bad position And guess there. who's going back to the free yeah. throw line? David Scott. Well, a chance is. to give Miami a one-point lead. Keith Stallings was given the charge to hold David Scott down, but, you know, we know he's an outstanding player, and that time Keith just got a half step behind defensively, and David Scott was able to get it in better position. It's 27 for the Cardinals and 26 for Miami, and Scott is perfect from the free throw line tonight. And he gets the roll on that one. We are tied with 3.40 to go, and Miami has a chance to take the lead for the first time tonight. We've been tied a couple of times, and he doesn't get it. Cardinals with a rebound. Sylvester keeps the tie intact. Cardinals looking to break it and take the lead. Stalling. Foul. Good pass by Spicer to Stalling, and Stalling had the inside move. Could not put it down, but it allowed two. On the year, 
Stallings shooting 76%, the Cardinals shooting 68%. You'd love your team to be around the 75% mark, Tom. Well, Keith's one of the better free throw shooters on Ball State's team. And, uh, you know, I think Ball State has not shot as well from the free throw line this year either, even though they're shooting around 68%. I think last year they're up around 70. Off the front of the rim, Stalling will have number two. Three and a half in the first half, and we're dead even at 27 apiece. Next one is in. Stalling one for two and breaks the tie. Cardinals back up on top, 28-27. Mercurio playing most of the first half. Scott. Again, Ball State doing a nice job of beating Miami to the spot where Miami wants the ball offensively. Whoa! <laughs> David Scott with three. Well, he with stalling in his face, he just knew, Tom, he wanted to put it up. Exactly, he rose right in his face. Cardinals trail now by two for the first time tonight, 28 to 30. Stalling will drive and a foul on Scott. There's a real battle going on. If fans want to watch a real one-on-one -on -one battle, Keith Stallings and David Scott are really going at one another. David Scott's a little bit hotter head than, than Stallings. Stallings a little more under control, but Scott's really, uh, I, I don't remember on him being that kind of a hothead. No, like I don't that. remember that either. He's usually pretty calm, but again, there's no question here that Keith had the angle oh, on yes. him. And, uh, you know, uh, just you know, matter. David didn't get there. Keith was just doing a little bit of what David did. Right, he? right, it's the same thing. But, you know, that usually happens, doesn't it? The, the person that complains the most is the one that's more guilty. Yes. They gave him a one in bonus. Well, ball they said bonus. he fouled him before he shot the free throw, or before he shot the shot from the uh, floor, and he got the first one. So he shoots number two, and it's off the front of the rim. You can see it's short. He pulled it up just a little bit. Cardinals trail by one at 30 to 29. Miami. Cardinals really looking to do a defensive job. Sylvester is on Scott. He'll throw it off the glass. Rebound Good to Rose. Defense. Good defense by the team that time. They really helped out. Cardinals on offense. Stalling, Spicer, Robbins around the key. Sylvester. Oh, whoa. That's Scott David Scott again. David Scott tried to fight through the pick, and that's foul number three, and he's going right. to sit down. Oh, that helped. Yeah, well, he, you know, he, he, his uh, temperament that time created that foul. He was mad yep. already about the key stalling situation, and Jeff Robbins saw him coming and just set planted, and uh, Scott just ran right over him. Great job by, uh, by Robbins that time, and really that's an example for, I think, a lot of the kids out there. you got to keep your temperament under control, and there's a great example. Now he's not playing. So Jeff Robbins adds foul number three to David Scott, and he gets the first of a one and bonus. We are tied again at 30. 226 remaining first half. And we keep playing that uh, game with David Scott and uh, Keith Stallings in and out. And I think that's a good move. It, it lets them rest because there's no question David Scott is a key to this ball club. You've got to keep him under control. Well, he left so, with 12 points already, right, Tom. I know. <laughs> 12 points, and he came off the bench after about five minutes had already elapsed in the ball game. 31 for Ball State and 30 for Miami. Almost a steal, but McKenna's too strong for Robbins. Robbins doing a nice Boy, job on Michaels. Score must be slick there. Miami wants to go inside. Cardinals with good defense. There's a three. It's up. It's good again. Mercurio. Well, that's their uh, number one offensive weapon. And Miami back in the lead, 33 to 31. Miami shooting the three very well. I didn't think the defense was too bad. Hall off the front of the rim. Yeah. Miami covers it well. Hall shot rather quickly, and the Cardinals could not convert. It was, it was short off the front. 135 in the first half. Cardinals on the short end by two. Good reverse move oh. around by number 23, Cra or Mike Williams. Great athletic move. Had him blocked out, and Miami goes up by four to minute 17 in the first half. 35-31. Cardinals not panicking, working the offense. They need a basket. Almost intercepted. Ooh. 
Mike Spicer will drive the lane back to Hall. He'll fire. No good. Rebound to Miami. He's just not laying it over tonight. He's just kind of pulling up short on his shot tonight. But that was a good shot that time. He was squared up very well. And you got to take those. Hall had a chance for a three. 54 and nine tenths seconds in the first half. <laughs> we know now. We do know. We have all the seconds to click by to Miami. We'll bring it down. Cardinals will get the last shot at the basket, but Miami leads by four. They played an excellent first half. And the Cardinals nice back have gone dry a little bit. Rebound to the Cardinals. Down comes Jeff Robbins. A uh, good time to pull it up and go for one shot. Lots here. of time remaining. Thank you God. can see the shot clock on I, your screen. I would imagine they'll go for one shot here. 20 seconds remain. Who will take it? Paul Robbins? Well, they know what they, they work on this day in and day out, so they know exactly what they're going to do. That's about now they're going to start. Spicer with the ball, seven seconds. He's trying to get Hall squared up inside. There's Robbins. Get it. Spicer will fire. Got yeah. it. Well, I'm not sure that was a design play, but I'll guarantee you one thing. Ball State's not going to give it back. They no, gave no. him two. They gave him two, and our score at halftime is 35-33, and Tom, a well-played first half. Well, I think so, Al. I think uh, from a defensive standpoint, a very good ball game uh, from both teams playing very hard. I think Ball State's done a nice job defensively, even though David Scott got 12 points. You know, the kid comes to play. He's a player. But I, I think uh, the score is indicative of the two defensive teams, 35-33. I think been a well-played game. And, uh, again, this we knew it was going to be tough coming in. It was going to be close coming in. And I think we're going to see the same thing in the second half. It's going to be a close ball game. Well, I tell you, the University Arena is rocking and rolling tonight. 11,500 people join us here in the inaugural game. So happy to have you with us on Channel 49 as we have an opportunity to to kick all everything off a new era in ball state university basketball starts tonight right here we've played a half it's miami 35 it's ball state 33 from the university arena in muncie you're watching ball state cardinal basketball family vision care with doctors john ashman orrin olinger david wilson and karen clem are pleased to join the members of channel 49 in supporting local broadcast of this sporting event from the initial exam and diagnosis to follow-up exams and service, the doctors offer quality vision care for the entire family. Family Vision Care with Drs. Ashman, Olinger, Wilson, and Clem are proud to be a part of and to support this community. Bassett Pontiac GMC Truck Isuzu features the 1992 line of Pontiac's GMC Trucks and Isuzu's. Also offering pre-owned cars, trucks, and RVs. Bassett is dedicated to serving the customer with a complete service department. Bassett Pontiac GMC Truck Isuzu. Committed to serving the needs of this community with quality products, quality service, and a commitment to supporting quality programs on WIPB. Local production and broadcast of this sporting event is made possible in part by a grant from... Ross Supermarkets Hardware and Pharmacy. Ross Supermarkets has been serving the Muncie community and Delaware County for over 65 years. Ross offers a wide selection of name brand groceries, meats, and produce. Ross Supermarket Hardware and Pharmacy. Four locations serving the community. French Tech Cleaner supports Cardinal Sports seen on WIBV 49. Under the same management for over 34 years, French Tex Cleaners provides full-service cleaning and laundry services, including shirts, pants, and draperies. French Tex Cleaners supporting public television in East Central Indiana, with four locations in Muncie, Northwest in Southway Plaza, and drive-ups at Lindenbrook and 2901 West Jackson. One of the advantages at Ball State University is that even though we are conducting some of the leading research in business today, we as professors bring that research and knowledge back to the classroom and back to our students. So they can apply that knowledge to their own projects, their own real life projects, where they get a chance to test and retest and challenge some of those elements of the, of the research. We believe this enhances their confidence for success in today's business world. This is just another element that makes us a premier teaching university.
we're at halftime. University Arena. Cardinals on the short end, but just by two. It's Mike Spicer canned a two-pointer right at the end of the first half, and you see the score. Miami leads at 35-33. Tonight, we're seeing the most visible area of Ball State's new health, physical activity, and arena complex. But there is so much more to this series of buildings, and we thought you'd like to have a quick tour. Tonight is the beginning of a new era in Ball State Athletics with the opening of the 11,500-seat University Arena. Encompassing over 18,000 square feet and just over 10 stories high, this athletic facility includes spacious locker rooms for both home and visiting teams, a modern press room, recruiting rooms, and a multi-purpose alumni room. But this is just one part of Ball State University's health, physical activity, and arena complex which is designed to bring together the physical education and intercollegiate athletic programs under one roof. Under the direction of Dr. Dave Costell, the world-renowned Human Performance Laboratory provides education in exercise physiology, adult fitness, and cardiac rehabilitation. Included in this area are two complete exercise testing rooms, an environmental chamber, and assorted exercise training equipment. The Institute for Wellness is charged with training wellness managers and developing wellness programs for the campus community. Directed by Neil Schmottlack, the Institute provides these services to over 20,000 students and 2,300 faculty and staff. New space for the School of Physical Education is part of the complex. Included in this area are dance studios and classrooms, plus 10 racquetball handball courts open for both educational and recreational purposes along with adjacent shower and locker room facilities. Connected to the new complex by a concourse, the already existing Llewellyn Aquatic Center provides pool facilities for recreation to all students, faculty, and staff. With over 55,000 square feet of space, it also includes a diving well and is home for the Ball State men's and women's swim teams. BSU's indoor track teams have a home in the 47,000 square foot field and sports building also existing before work on the complex began. This building provides space for both men's and women's indoor track teams, as well as a winter refuge for the men's baseball team, women's softball team, and both outdoor track programs. The School of Physical Education also uses this structure for a variety of classes. When not otherwise occupied, the building is open for recreational use by students, faculty, and staff. 57 administrators, coaches, and support personnel from both the men's and women's intercollegiate athletic programs have office space in this new complex. There are new administrative offices, a new sports information office, and conference rooms with complete audio and video capabilities. Each office is also equipped with a computer, printer, television monitor, and VCR. The Ball State Health, Physical Activity, and Arena Complex expanding the university's commitment to students, faculty, staff, and East Central Indiana. Well, it's a beautiful facility, and you're looking at the major focal point, the University Arena, seating some 11,500 basketball fans, and I dare say most every one of them is here on a bitterly cold and snowy Muncie, Indiana night. Halftime score, 35 for Miami and 33 for the Cardinals. Orrin will have statistics and a whole lot more coming up next from Muncie, Indiana, the Uni Uni University Arena. You're watching Ball State Cardinal Basketball. Wendy's Restaurants of Muncie proudly supports sporting events on WIPB 49. Wendy's features the Super Bar, the hot and cold food buffet with an international flavor, Wendy's Old Fashioned Hamburgers, plus a wide variety of food items. Wendy's Old Fashioned Hamburger Restaurants, with four locations, South Madison, West Jackson, East McGalliard, and at the Tally on the campus of Ball State. Defer, Varan, Hanley, Radcliffe, and Reed, attorneys at law, are pleased to provide partial funding for programs on WIPB. Trial lawyers Steve Murphy and Scott Shockley practice with nine other attorneys in serving both individuals and businesses. Defer, Varan, Hanley, Radcliffe, and Reed, serving Muncie and East Central Indiana for 85 years, is deeply committed to its clients and the community. Natzer Heating and Cooling. 
located at 3512 North Walnut in Muncie, is proud to support this sporting event seen on WIPB-TV. Condenser Heating and Cooling, specialist in sales and service of heat pumps, furnaces, and boilers. Installation in the residential and commercial markets with 24-hour emergency service available. Knatzer Heating and Cooling, a family-owned business serving the residents of East Central Indiana. In Muncie, Knatzer has the answer. Thirty-three for Ball State and thirty-five for Miami. Nice to have you with us on WIPB. And speaking of having you with us, we'll be back with you in just a couple of days for our next telecast of Ball State Cardinal basketball. That's coming up this Saturday, January 18th. The Cardinals will travel to Reed Fieldhouse in Kalamazoo, Michigan. They'll be facing the Broncos of Western Michigan University. Western is coached by Bob Donawald, who is in his third year at the Bronco helm. Tom, Oren, and I will bring you all the action with tip-off set for, set, or for 2.30. And it'll be the Cardinals and the Western Michigan Broncos this Saturday, January 18th, right here on WIPB. Make sure you join us. Now with our halftime statistics, here's Oren. Thanks, Al. Well, I'll tell you what. We expected a great game, and so far we certainly have had in the new Ball State University arena. Team-wise, Ball State really didn't shoot too well from the field as they shot 40% to Miami's uh, 50%. However, Ball State did take uh, 20, uh, 30 shots compared to Miami's 22 shots. Miami was shooting 50% as they were uh, for their 22 shots. From the free throw line, Ball State was 8 for 11 as they were shooting about 73%, and Miami 7 for 11, 64%. Leading scorers for Miami, David Scott, 12, Mr. Instant Offense. He always comes off the bench and always does a great job every, every time we've watched him play. He 12 points in that first half. Jamie Mercurio, 9 points as he was from the three-point line, three for eight, three-point attempts. And Jamie Mercurio really kind of hurt Ball State during that first half with his three-point shots. Mike Williams came in, did a fantastic job and makes some great moves underneath the basket. He was one of the leading scorers with five points. Leading scorers for Ball State, we have David Hall with eight points in the first half, Jeff Robbins with five, Chandler Thompson with five, and Keith Stalling with five. Personal fouls, Ball State has three people with that two personal fouls each, Keith Stalling, Bill Gillis, and Chandler Thompson. Those three have two fouls each. And David Scott, Miami, is certainly a player that we want to watch very carefully. They have, he has three personal fouls after the first half, so I'm sure when we come back onto the court, we're going to do a, try to do a good job of getting that fourth foul on him. Well, the stats show that, you know, Miami's shooting very well from the field. Ball State not so well from the field, but Ball State took more shots. You're absolutely right, Orrin. And uh, the Cardinals trail by two. Uh, the uh, Cardinals uh, trying to do a, a, the kind of a job to help inaugurate this arena. And we want them to pull out a victory. We know you do, too. So stay with us. We've got more basketball coming your way. You're watching Cardinal Basketball on WIPB. Indiana Michigan Power Company, at your service in the community. Marketing and customer service representatives are available for explanation and administration of programs. Indiana Michigan Power Company, providing assistance to customers in the residential, commercial, and industrial markets, responding to questions and concerns with trade allies. Indiana Michigan Power, your hometown electric company, is proud to support programs on Channel 49. The top producing agents of Remax Realty Plus provide partial funding for WIPB sporting events. Rosemary and Ann Gishler. Marjorie Wright. Tom Sloan. Nancy Kinghorn. Carolyn Beeson. Linda McKnight. Remax Realty Plus. Professionals in real estate. This sporting event is brought to you in part by a grant from Pizza King Restaurants of East Central Indiana. At Pizza King, each pizza is made complete to order with fresh ingredients. They also serve hot sandwiches and pasta. All items are available for dining room and most for carryout and delivery. Pizza King Restaurants, serving Muncie and East Central Indiana. This Ball State Cardinal basketball game is telecast under broadcast rights granted by Ball State University and is solely intended for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. 
any use of this telecast without the express written consent of Ball State University and WIPB is prohibited. Tom, let's take a look at how the first half ended. The ball was in Mike Spicer's hands, and the Cardinals trailed by four. We've got a replay on that. A good question here. Uh, Jim Desmond, who's the official of the MAC, came down and asked me if that was a three-pointer or not, and definitely it was not there. Mike just did an another angle here. Mike just did a nice job of controlling it. Uh, McCurio's right there. I mean, he, he is right there, and Mike just does an excellent job of following through and laying it right over. I mean, that was a super defensive job, super offensive job. Definitely a two-pointer, however. And Mercurio with a decided height advantage over Mike Spicer. And uh, Mike not known to be the shooter out there. That's, oh the, no. that's one of the big things. Uh, you wouldn't expect it to be in his hand at the end. But, you know, that's the kind of kid Mike Spicer is. If, if there's a leader on this team, it's Mike Spicer from the standpoint. You know, he does what he has to do to get the job done. And that, that's why you got to love the kid. Or in Miami really burning the nets from three-point range. Oh, wow, they certainly did. 67% as they were uh, six for nine from the three-point range. Ball State from three point only shooting about 14 percent, and as we mentioned earlier, uh, Miami did a good job from the field shooting 50 percent to Ball State's 40 percent. You know, talk about Mike Spicer taking that last shot, like you said, Tom. Not known for that, he's known as an assist man. And certainly, he did that the first half also. Mike led everybody with five assists and also two steals. So the senior, we we were wondering if the senior was going to come to play this year, and he certainly has shown us that he has. Well, the Cardinals uh, need Tom uh, to. Do a little tighter job but to deny that three-point shot well one of the things that's happening uh, they're getting some of those threes also in transition kind of a semi-transition secondary break concept and again ball state knows that one of the things miami does is they'll spot up for those threes and they're not afraid to shoot them however you look at some of the threes that were taken and i remember one in particular where keith stallings was right definitely in the face of david scott and yes. he <laughs> he just drilled it so you know again how long can that particular percentage last? And I don't think it can last that long. Nobody's going to shoot 67% uh, from the threes, and Ball State is not doing that poor of job on defense. Let's take a look at uh, Stalling stealing the ball from Mike Scott on our yeah, You can see what happened this time. He came right, right down, out. and yep. then and then David Scott just got a little extra activity in there as he came down. He was a little frustrated that uh, Stalling was able to knock that ball out of his hands. Charlie Cardinal up on the press row table there, igniting the fans. You can take a look around here. This is a beautiful facility, and one that the Cardinals and the Ball State community and Muncie community have worked so very hard to acquire. Well, you know, uh, some interesting facts. The arena was constructed, Tom, with about $12.5 million in private donations. You know, excellent job, part of the Wings campaign now, and uh, just an excellent job raising the money and support from the state and also from the local community. We are underway. Second half begins. Miami on the alternate possessions gets the ball out of bounds to start the second half. Van Leer starts on the outside for Miami. That's an interesting uh, situation because, again, Van Leer has not played that much this, this year. And I think Joby Wright, the coach at Miami, is trying to pick up on a little bit of the fact that he's returning home here and it might uh, juice him up a little bit more. David Scott from Miami, the only player in personal foul trouble with three. Bros breaks up McKenna on his turn. He contests the shot, Whoa. and McKenna just puts in a professional shot. That's McKenna fun. just took it up on Bros, and Bros was right with him, and McKenna just drilled it. And Bros has nothing to be ashamed of. He did everything he could, but McKenna just put it in. Gillis is foul. Ball that. inbounded. Uh, Incited to Gillis on from Bros, and he got the foul. It'll be a common foul out of bounds. Miami is fronting Bill Gillis down on the low block in there, and again, Miami had good help side defense that time, but Bill was able still to get it up. Outside, Spicer inbounds to Bros. Chandler Thompson, who didn't play much the first half, gets the shot off, can't get it in. So Chandler, who played uh, sparingly with two fouls. There's McKenna again, and guess what? He got two more. Boy, you know, he had an excellent game against Kent. He had 19 points and 12 rebounds against Kent State last Saturday. Uh, so he's got some capability. Huh? So already Miami has come up and gotten two for two, and the ball is knocked out of bounds. Bros tried to back it outside to Jeff Robbins. Well, you know, uh, Coach Hunsaker always says the first five minutes of that second half is so key and instrumental into determining the tempo of the game. and. Right now, Miami's got the upper hand on that. Chandler Thompson got it. 
Chandler looks fluid, Tom. He looks like he's got his shooting eye tonight. Chandler's playing fairly well. It, again, defense is one of the things Chandler kind of slacks off on once in a while, but right now I think offensively he's getting into more confidence. 39-35, Cardinals trail by four. They trail by two at halftime. Miami with some nice basketball. Shot inside, rebounded. Who's going to get it? Jeff Robbins, and it's knocked out of bounds. Van Leer off his knee. Well, that was great hustle by Jeff Robbins oh, that yes. time. I mean, he was walking the proverbial tight rope that time. He could have been right over here, right into the press row. There is not much room between no. us and the no, floor. You're exactly right, and he was really, here's a nice job, but he just keeps hustling after the ball, not really <laughs> caring where he's going to end up. That's a great job by Jeff. So Robbins playing a good game tonight, good floor game. Whoa. Ball is knocked away. Boy, Van Leer's all over him. It sure was. His alley -oop. Nice play. Chandler Thompson and give the assist to Robbins. Well, that's one of those eye contact plays, and they just saw each other, and Chandler made the baseline move, and Jeff did a nice job of getting it to him. McKenna. That's one of those things the Ball State needs to ignite them right now, Al, and kind of stop this Miami run. Van Leer wants to put it up at Robbins. Got him. Williams inside. Boy, did he make a nice move. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'll tell you what, he, that's a mismatch when you get uh, Williams and Bill Gillis, though, because Williams is just uh, too quick for Bill. He's got to get some help. Pushes the lead back to four. 41 for Miami, 37 for the Cardinals. Cardinals have to find a way to shut Miami down. Chandler looks outside and finds Spicer. Gillis trying to find a way inside to get open. Chandler slips. There slips. Be, you know, there's, you know, uh, there's something. Oh, we've seen a lot of people slip over there today. Van Leer just stuffed Cedric it. Van Leer got the stuff, and Miami goes up by six, 37-43. Chandler had the move, but he just slipped down. A couple of slips, you're right, Tom, in that same area. I don't know if there's something over there or not, but uh, too much wax. Thompson, no, off the front of the rim. Rebounded by Mercurio. And Miami in control right now as they are denying the Cardinals any second shots. McKenna on Gillis, off the glass. Ooh, nice shot. Well, obviously, as we alluded to a while ago, he has the capability yeah. of what he did, did against Kent. We didn't see that in the first half, but uh, he's really posting up very nicely down there. And McKenna only averaging five points a game has played a dynamic first half or second half here with six quick baskets on a couple of real pro-sized turns. Well, you know, uh, Ball State at Kent really got hurt with the inside game that Kent was really able to score a lot of points, particularly in the first half. And if you can take a kid like McKenna, and he can do that against Kent State, that really indicates uh, some capability of this young sophomore kid. So I'm very impressed with what he's done here in the second half. But again, that, that first five-minute start, Al, is so important. And here's a replay on that last. You see where he gets the ball. He's right down there on that low block. And that's just a good shot. Bill Gillis is right there in his face. You really can't do a whole lot more than that other than just not let him have the ball. Then do you front him on that one, Tom? Well, you Instead know, that, that's, a, that's a decision the coach is making. I think they've made a decision to play behind there because, you know, they feel they can stop him. And again, defensively, Bill Gillis is right where he needs to be. So, uh, you know, they may have to take a look at that. But I think knowing Dick Hunsaker, he's going to stick He's going to stick with what uh, got him here. And I think you'll still see him play that way. And there's, a, there's that replay. Chandler again, snuck in the back door. Chandler did a nice nice timing. That's a real timing situation, and, and people don't really understand sometimes the timing that has to take place for that ball to be right in the right spot when he makes that jump. Jeff Robbins is out. Jamal Sylvester is in for the Cardinals, as is stalling for the Cardinals. Now, Scott is not in there for Miami, but they put stalling in for a little more offense. The ball State Sylvester. needs to make a little offensive He'll charge He'll take the here. shot. He got it. Cardinals can't get it back in all one big gulp. They'll take it back a shot at a time and play the tough D. McKenna on the year, Tom, just has not shown the instinct at only five points a game to score like he has tonight so far. And you think that he got 19 of those in one game now, so <laughs> he was averaging a lot less than that before he got the 19. Cardinals covering up well. McKenna's got the ball in his hands. Michaels will come around. Well, you shot up off. Oh, I got to block him out. Stallings did not box out at all that time. McKenna, no good. Rebound to Chandler. Well, they had set about three, two or three second effort chances there, and you can't give them that many. Chandler almost. Stalling. 
Sylvester thinks better and brings it back and Cardinals will set it up. There goes nice Sylvester. Drive. Good job, good feed by Keith Stone. Cardinals clawing their way back in. They were down eight. They're down four, 45-41. That was some good ball movement on the offense that time, which we haven't seen this second half. Powell over the back. Jamal Sylvester called for it. He's on. Let's see who he was uh, over the back on. Number 23, he was over Mike Williams' back. First personal foul on the Cardinals. Team foul in this first half and first one on Sylvester. Michaels gets the tough inbounds pass from Mercurio. Sylvester's all over him. Miami has not put up the three. Michaels gets the two and right in Gillis's hands. Short off the front of the rim. Miami burned the nets at 67% on threes. They haven't fired one yet this half, but they haven't had to. Sylvester on the drive doesn't get it. Rebound and a foul. Sylvester on the follow got the foul on Mercurio. And that'll be the second foul on Sylvester and the second team foul this half. Again, I'm not sure. Ball State seems to make those moves once in a while. That was kind of a forced shot, forced drive. And you'll see here, really didn't have a whole lot. There was two good defensive men right there. And I think uh, Jamal just really kind of threw it up there. Uh, I know Dix called him over the side, and I'm sure he uh, made him aware of that. But again, you need that good movement, good continuity, and uh, let the offense help create a lot of those shots. And sometimes Ball State gets in a hurry and doesn't let that happen. 45-41, the Cardinals still trail. They lost the lead late in the first half, and Miami has maintained their poise and composure. Scored well here in the first half. 14-11 remaining in the ballgame. Derek Cross. Scott is in. Scott Stalling is on him. In. Nice baseline Scott move. does not get it. Rebound they to Miami. Alive. Foul. Cardinals had that rebound. It just didn't fall in their hands. They had it covered, Tom. Well, right now, in the last two or three possessions, Miami is just beating Ball State to the boards in there and getting that second and third effort, and that's really hurting them right now. They're not getting the good body on the man to block them out, and that was one of the things the coaches have talked about earlier. You've got to get a body on these people that really go to the board, and they're not doing that. Going to the free throw line, Michael Williams, and he doesn't get it. So Williams draws nothing but a goose egg in the first shot. Shooting 63%, rebound to the Cardinals. He missed both. Fouled in the act of shooting. Stalling the Spicer to Chandler Thompson with the three. Oh, Doesn't boy. go. That was, a, that was an NBA three. Uh-oh, got a break there. We have a foul on John McKenna. No, I take oh, that back. That's Matt Kramer. Kramer. Yeah. As Kramer was in, for McKenna and Kramer gets called for the foul. Didn't see who he fouled. No, I, it could have been after the shot on Chandler, I think. Foul after the shot, so the Cardinals just get it out of bounds, and we have another foul on Kramer Miami. Again, I think he's holding that's on somebody. on Kramer. Yeah, he's holding somebody in there. Well, that's two of the quickest fouls you're going to see for a while. So the Cardinals put another team foul on Miami. It's three team fouls apiece. Sylvester gets the inbounds from Spicer, and he'll set it up. Cardinals down by four. 13-43. Gillis. He wants to move. He'll put up the shot. Got it. Good move by Bill Gillis. Got the 12-footer, and the Cardinals are down by two. You know, there was some worry, Tom, but and a steal. Sylvester. Ooh, ooh, Bill oh, Thompson. Ooh. And we've got a foul. Almost. No, a turnover. He stepped out of bounds. Almost a fantastic move. That would have... <laughs> there was some worry, Tom, that when the Cardinals moved from Irving Gym to University Arena, the tightness of the of this crowd noise was not going to be there. I don't think that's a problem no, anymore. Here's the replay. You can see what happened here. Jamal just stepped in and just barely got the foot down before he went out of bounds. Rebound. Keith Stalling. Shot up and no good. Stalling brings it down and they'll slow it down. And Sylvester down to the layup. He was oh. fouled. Now Ball State pulling a little secondary transition here on a secondary break and a nice job by Keith Stallings to recognize the fact that Jamal was filling that lane and uh, got the ball to him. Here's a replay. And let me work. Timeout on the floor. Let's Here's take a, a look at that. that. And you can see, again, he got a, kind of a secondary break there and they didn't cover Jamal and he just took it all the way in. Foul on McKenna. That is two on McKenna. 
So already two on McKenna, two on Kramer, three on David Scott. Cardinals Tom would be well advised to continue to push it inside and try to add some more to the foul total. Well, you know, when we started the game, we talked about the inside play, and that could be a critical factor. And I think early in the second half here, McKenna did a nice job with the inside play, and Miami went ahead. Right now, Ball State's doing a good job of driving, getting the ball inside, and uh, they're getting back in the ball game. Tonight's lineup was changed so we could bring you coverage of this game. The rest of this evening's programming is as follows. Scientific American Frontiers will be seen at 9.30, 10.30, Edge, and great performances then at 11.30. We thank you if you were tuning in for any of those shows. I hope you're enjoying the ball game. It's just what we thought it would be, a tight barn burner down to the wire. Three minutes. 16 seconds remain in the ball game, and the Cardinals on the short end, 45 to 43. 11,500 basketball fans, I'd say easily 11,499 of them are Cardinal fans. Well, they did a nice job. The fans did filling this up uh, in spite of the inclement weather out there. I'm very impressed. Sylvester at the free throw line. He has two, and he got number one. They need that to happen. Cardinals must be good at the free throw line because it's a chance to tie the ball game. And they were down seven early in this half, Al, so this is a nice comeback by Ball State. Two good ones by Jamal, and we are tied. It was 45 to 37. And the Cardinals have come back and tied it. And that's with Scott and McKenna both in there. Michaels on the shot. It's going to be over. Ooh. Well, you don't see too many air balls from him. But he really has got the ball. So that Vester secondary on break the drive. again. Nice finish. Excellent finish by Jamal that time. Just excellent finish. Mike Spicer got the ball to him, and he finished it just right the way you draw it on the board. Intercept. Stalling on the drive. Oh. Doesn't get oh. it, but Chandler is there. Chandler Thompson with the putback. Well, I'll tell you what, they ignited this crowd big time. Oh, my, oh, my. Big time, I guess. <laughs> Gentlemen, <laughs> cue it up. Chandler Thompson's putback is reminiscent of NCAA That's right, three exactly, years ago. Exactly. Well, this uh, sure got the crowd into this real quick, and I, I think the kids are fired up, too. I think they need that emotional kind of uh, foul on the outside. Spicer, as Mercurio got around him, Spicer could do nothing but foul him. Common foul out of bounds. Miami will start it over again. Just man, a, oh man, what a turnaround. What a, what a great run by Ball State. Uh, just an excellent turnaround very quickly there. Here's the last play, and you can see he, got, he was there stalling, just missing. But here's Chandler, just rising. I mean, rising oh, yeah. above everybody. Jamal Sylvester will sit down. David mm -hmm. Hall comes in, mm -hmm. and Sylvester really a key factor very, in that run. Very much an impetus there. He did a lot of things. Eight points that Jamal has when he went off. McKenna off the glass. No good. Rebound to Hall. Gillis held him out. Gillis stood his ground, and McKenna could not get the angle. Hall with the three. Yes. Yes. He got two. They well, said he was on the line. They're fired. They're fired. Cardinals have outscored Miami 14 to nothing. And they lead it 51 to 45. Great, great run. Great run. Scott. No good. Rebound to Gillis. Transition. David Hall. No good. He had a good angle. Had a good on. It was a good shot. Good transition shot. Cardinals on a run. Miami trying to find basket. Doesn't get it. Rebound. Ball Stalling, State. three really on looking. two. Chandler oh, Thompson, oh, he throws it out of bounds. Yeah. Well, he was there. Mike just got it there a little bit too high. But he was there. I mean, Ball State is really starting to run, get that transition game going. And it looks like Miami is a little tired. They're just not getting back, even though Ball State's getting out very quickly. Well, an unbelievable run, Orrin. Cardinals have outscored Miami. They were at 37. 
They have outscored them 14 zip. Well, I tell you what, Jamal Sylvester and Chandler Thompson really teamed together to bring them back as Jamal Sylvester, eight points during this half on that run, just fantastic. He really does a great job of going to the basket. When he's got a chance to make it a break, he's going to take it. And, of course, Chandler uh, has six points this second half. So those two guys and then the uh, great assist from Mike Spicer and the rest of the teammates. Good rebounding inside on the boards from Bill Gillis. So it's a really a team effort getting us back into this game. One Tom, of the, uh, uh, one of the things that uh, Coach Huntsaker is going to be faced with, he's going to have to rest some of his players, but they're on a roll right now. Yeah, one, one of the things that's happening also, Al, is Miami's been crashing the offensive boards down here and getting away with it. They're getting second and third shots and all of a sudden Ball State's coming up with that first rebound and they're getting it out and I think Miami's getting caught in their own little game there. They've been crashing the boards with three and four people. Ball State's getting the first yes. rebound, getting it out quickly yeah. and they're getting caught. And I think uh, Joby's going to have to make uh, an adjustment there because they're really getting caught. Well, Miami will inbounds under the Cardinal basket. Cardinal's putting a little pressure on that. McKenna gets the inbounds pass, and Mercurio will bring it back. Cardinals in the game against Cal State Sacramento on Monday night experimented with a little zone trap. <laughs> yeah, not uh, very long, though. <laughs> Dick Hunsaker said they, we may never see that in the Cardinal playbook ever. McKenna back outside. Mercurio, no good. Rebound. To Miami, back up again, no good. Rebound to Miami. Uh, can't give him McKenna that will shoot it again. He got it. You cannot give them those that three shots like that. You do, they're going to hit one. That ball came off the rim, yeah, awfully it strong. It, you're right. The Cardinals were in position, just bounded too long. First two points for Miami. Stalling foul. I really like the way Ball State is taking the ball to the oh, basket yeah. right now. They're being very aggressive, very sturdy. Very confident with what they're doing. Uh, if, if Miami gives them a little daylight, like Keith Stallings that time, just take it. He had some daylight. He definitely had a step on Van Leer, and he flat out just took him to the hole. Foul number 23, Mike Williams. There's the foul, and Keith Stallings will go to the free throw line. Thompson back in, took a little rest. That was Mike And Jamal Williams. Sylvester is back in also. I said Van Leer, but it was 23, not 24, that uh, he drove on. They're very strong. Scott is back out now. Stalling has two, got the first. Well, there's still a lot of time in the ball game out with 10.30 to go, as we know, but that was just an excellent run by Ball State. Basketball is a game of runs, and Stalling puts two more in. 53-47. It was uh, on the verge of Ball State moving into double-digit deficit, and the Cardinals just took control of the ball game. Outscored Miami in a 14 to nothing run, and they lead it by six at 53-47. McKenna now playing much of the first of the second half. That's Michaels. Cardinals playing good, aggressive defense. Gillis trying to stay with McKenna. He's a he's a big kid. He moves inside. Where's it going to be? Cardinals take it away quickly. Stalling down. He's going to put it up. No. Oh. Miami gets it. They lost control. Yeah. Just got a little bit too quick that time. You know, sometimes when you go down there, if it's not there, you got to pull it back out. Jamal Sylvester tried to get the ball back, just didn't happen. Inside to Williams, knocked away by Mike, Mike Spicer. Spicer. Great Good help defense. Great help by Spice. Spice covered down that time on Williams, and they're doing an excellent job on Williams. He's a, I still think he's the best athlete out there for Miami, and Ball State's doing a nice job of shutting him down. Nine minutes, 40 seconds remain in the ball game at University Arena, and the Cardinals lead it 53-47. to 47. From University Arena here in Muncie, you're watching Ball State Cardinal basketball. Family Vision Care with Drs. John Ashman, Orrin Olinger, David Wilson, and Karen Clem are pleased to join the members of Channel 49 in supporting local broadcast of this sporting event. From the initial exam and diagnosis to follow-up exams and service, the doctors offer quality vision care for the entire family. Family Vision Care with Drs. Ashman, Olinger, Wilson, and Clem are proud to be a part of and to support this community. Coach Unsaker recaps tonight's performance at 8 o'clock Thursday night on Channel 49. You can tune in to hear the coach's interpretation of the game on halftime with Hunsaker and Dobbs. <laughs> yeah, he'll be there too. <laughs> and that'll be Thursday night at 8 here on WIPB. 
Well, the Cardinals are leading this one 53 to 47. Nine minutes and 40 seconds to go, and Tom, that's quite a run. Well, I think Ball State just tuned it up a little bit higher notch, higher frequency. Uh, they really have, have really turned it up. They come out strong. They come out aggressive. Ball State's got a lot of good athletes, and boy, if you get a team in a transition game, I think they'll win nine times out of ten. Other MAC games around Western Michigan's leading Kent State. 49 to 31. Western is Ball State's next opponent, and we first know what Kent did to Ball State at Kent last week. That'll be quite a ball game Saturday, and we hope you'll join us because we'll be there at 2:30 for the telecast here on Channel 49. McKenna almost took the shot, and Bill Gillis gets the ball and knocks it out of bounds. Couldn't quite get a hold of it. That's all right. Good job. Good hustle. There's an update. Western now leads Kent 59 to 41, four minutes remaining. And that's amazing because that's at Kent. That's just amazing. <laughs> Kent could do no wrong against the Cardinals, and obviously tonight that's not the case. Ohio leads Toledo at halftime 34. No, I take that back. They trail Toledo 34-37. Inside, rejected. McKenna went up, and Gillis nice knocked him into the bleachers. Bill's doing an excellent job right now. He got burned early on a couple of times. Here you, here you see that again, and he goes up and Bill's right there. Good timing, comes with the inside hand, the left hand, not the right hand, and doesn't go across the body. McKenna on the outside. Oh, did he put it in? He got a home yep, run. Can you believe it? Well, I mean, he doesn't shoot many of those. I'll well, guarantee you let the you. guy shoot it when he's out there, and Gillis laid off of him, and it's 53 to 50. That's one of those things the scouting report says he can't shoot it out there. Stalling. Keith, Keith, Keith. Keith. Does not get it. McKenna We're strong off the glass. Issue. That's not a good selection. Michaels back outside. McKenna. Michaels will shoot the three. Doesn't get it. Rebound to Stalling. Spicer. Cardinals on the transition. Run, run, run. And a foul. Foul on number three, Derek Cross. Now, one of the things that happens once in a while when you have a lot of success running that transition game, sometimes you end up trying to force the issue. And I've seen that with Ball State uh, last two or three times down the floor. When they really didn't have anything, they need to pull back out. Uh, don't try to cram it down somebody's throat if it's already there. Gillis will come back into the ball game, and I should say, a Bill, going out will be Bill Gillis. He worked very hard. He in there, did very work hard. very hard. Coming back in is David Rose. Oh, it doesn't go, but a foul before the shot. And that's a bonus. And Miami time. is already over the limit. What a turnaround from right. the first half. Right. That was exactly the opposite in the first half. The Ball State a much better free throw shooting team than Miami, and hopefully they can cash in on this. Jamal Sylvester will go to the line. He'll have a one and bonus. Miami with 17 fouls. Cardinals have but four. Sylvester bags number one. <laughs> he wasn't sure that was going to go. On the year, Sylvester shooting... Only about just 46 percent. Yes, that's why he loved that shot. Yeah, <laughs> that helped the percentage. He gets so excited, uh -huh. and we shouldn't have said it. We jinxed him. You said it out. 54-50. Cardinals on top. Eight and a half minutes to go in the ball game. Mid American Conference action. Nice Scott. curl shot. Oh, boy, that's what he can do so well. He comes off of that screen and curls around. I mean, what a nice balance. He's a shooter. Scott is a shooter, and he put it in. 54-52. Chandler Thompson, he is fouled on the floor by Michaels. But Miami is really grabbing and getting the hands inside and really creating a, a lot of foul problems for themselves right now. Really a lot of unnecessary stuff. They're getting a little over-aggressive. Looks like something was discussed at halftime, Tom. The Toms ha or the uh, the coaches evidently realized the Cardinals could drive on Miami, and Miami right. now being the team caught out of position. Right. Uh, Miami will play very hard, hard-nosed defense. They'll get right up on top of you, and if you can take them one on one, uh, you're going to draw a lot of fouls. And they sure have here with eight minutes to go. You got eight team fouls and two more ball states. Got two automatic. Uh, this could be a big factor. Thompson, one and bonus, got the number one. He had a rough night Monday night at the free throw line. So he spent a lot of extra time the last couple of days practicing, making sure the release was where he wanted it. Free throws out or in the head. I mean, I, I really truly believe that's a lot of uh, emotion, a lot of feeling, uh, a lot of confidence is right in the head on free throw shooting. It's in the head and in the basket. The Cardinals on top by four, 56-52. 
This one is going to go to the wire. There is no doubt. We are really impressed with Mr. McKenna for Miami, the 6'10 sophomore. He's played an excellent inside game. Rebound to the Cardinals, Chandler Thompson. Ball's going to be knocked out of bounds and give it to Miami. I think that's probably the right call from what I saw. It looked like it went off of uh, Stallings' hands. Bill Gillis has come back into the ball game. He got a quick rest, and Davis Bros has gone out. To the Cardinals with Stalling and Sylvester Gillis down under. Miami trails by four. We have a whistle, and we have a foul on Mike Spicer. I say he was playing a little too close for comfort. I think I think uh, Michaels came off of a nice uh, side back screen down there, and uh, Mike got caught, and he, I think he was reaching out trying to grab his uniform to catch up. The official was right in front of him. Coming out will be Derek Cross, and coming into the ball game for Miami, and I've got to catch uh, who came in. Gene Mercurio. 15, Mercurio back in. Ooh. McKenna almost with the shot. Yeah. He put in the three the last time, so Gillis this time came out to check him. We know what Miami can do with the oh, they, threes. There's a double screen. Knocked away, McKenna. Back outside. There's a three. It's up. It's no good. Rebound. Who's got it? McKenna taken away. Tripped away by Stalling. And a trip on Mercurio. That might have hurt. I and mean, he really hit his knee. It looked like knee to knee. So Mercurio gets the foul. That is the ninth team foul of Miami at the 7.08 mark. Mark this one down. The Cardinals, one more foul. Every foul shot is a two shotter. That good English? That's all right. <laughs> you, know, you can see a replay here. And again, nice strip by good Keith. Take he takes out. And boy, bingo, they just hit knees. It's class. That's like two symbols of some kind. So Stalling will go to the free throw line. He'll have a one and bonus. Cardinals have five team fouls this final half. First foul on Mercurio. Scott has played the, the good part of the second half without picking up his fourth personal foul. Stalin gets number one. As we said, after the next team foul against Miami, that will not be important. You get two automatically in the new rule. It says after ten, it's two every time to the line. Bingo. He got two, and it's 58-52. The lead is back to six. It teeters precariously on the six mark. And with Miami's three shooters, it can be dissolved in a matter of moments. Miami doing a much better job right now, really trying to set a lot of screens. They even have a triple screen they'll set. They set a lot of double picks. They're trying to free somebody up, and they're, they're really working hard right now. Inside, Williams got the roll. Boy, good move by Williams. He I is like a him. beautiful looking player. Yeah, I like him. And he's the kind of kid you really can't give the ball down to that low block because he's just too quick. Does he look good? 58 54. It's a two point ball game. A four point ball game. I take it back. He's stalling. Outside, Spicer. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Cardinals will work the perimeter a little bit, take a little time off. Inside to. Gillis, oh, no good. He gets his own rebound and doesn't get it. Rebound inside Gillis again. Get in there. He got fouled that time. Great, great second and third effort by Bill Gillis. Just so Bill Gillis shot it up, got his own rebound, shot it again, got it again. Three times up, couldn't buy it, but he gets fouled. I know we've said this before. Here's a replay on that. And you want to see just Gillis some second and third effort. Again, a good catch, good square up. One or the other side, got it again. Again, a good shot. Comes off of there. He got a good roll. And that time, he, he every time, Al, the thing that I'm impressed with, every time he collected, got himself squared away, yeah. and went up strong. It wasn't one of those, just throw it up there. Gillis has two. It was a two-shot foul. But that puts them on the 10 mark. And that's the critical factor. And free throws may very well decide this ball game. Right now, Miami way over the limit in trouble right now. Spins out. You got a shot. Hit. Looked good, but didn't go. So we're on the uneven numbers now. It's 59-54. The lead is five. 
again, if you watch this action behind and off the ball, there is a lot of hard hitting going on, a lot of real good screens being set. There's a little, uh, Bill got caught on a little lob. Tried to get it inside to Scott. Common foul out of bounds. That's the sixth team foul. So that was a giveaway. The next one will put the Cardinals in the one and bonus. Timeout on the floor. Cardinals call it. They want to take a rest. And one thing that we've noticed, Tom, in this second half, not as many substitutions as normal. Yeah, you're exactly right, Alan. Neither team, uh, both teams are fairly deep. They, they can play eight, nine, ten players. In fact, that's one of the positive, one of the attributes that both teams have, but we really haven't seen that that much this second half. <clears throat> I think one of the key things uh, is, and you see on the last foul here again, Bill just kind of gets caught in a precarious situation trying to go help on David Scott and kind of over the back there. Uh, again, that's a uh, pretty good defense, but you just don't want to come down across the man. You're going to get a foul every time. But uh, Ball State, again, playing very well. They're, they're looking out, I think, to be aggressive and assertive, and that's very important at this point. Or in scoring-wise, uh, how are we looking on scoring? This is John McKenna, John McKenna this half. I tell you, you know, for a guy who averages a little over, we've said that before, a little over five points a game, he has 13 already tonight, 11 this half. But, you know, uh, this is why this, thing, this team does remind us an awful lot of Ball State because any given night, there's a number of players that can step forward and put it in the basket, and that's what John McKenna's done so far for Miami. Well, the Cardinals are up. They have the advantage. They've got the five-point lead, and we're at 5.48 on the clock. And I can attest to the fact that all the <laughs> scoreboards are working. <laughs> and they're all the same. Yeah. And they're all the same. And we can attest that the students are in the game because they're right behind us. <laughs> they are very loud. And they have been standing since they tipped it off. And that's the kind of fan support the Cardinals have. Oh. McKenna gets it inside. He doesn't get the roll, but he gets the rebound. And Stalling takes it away. And right away, oh. Kramer commits a foul. You know, I don't know how many fouls Kramer has, but I know three fouls. He's got four fouls. And four three fouls. of those have been, he's just in the wrong spot at the wrong three time. Three this half. And, and all three of those <laughs> yeah. were that situation. Yeah, just kind of the wrong spot at the wrong time. So Matt Kramer gets the foul. That's his fourth. He's the junior from Gahanna, Ohio. You know, he started 26 of their 28 games last year, and he really hasn't played as much this year, and that's an indication of where Miami has come because this is a veteran ball club. So Keith Stalling is right back where he was moments ago, and he has two. And that's going to be off. You can see it going. Yeah. Well, you got to, you know, you really do have to hit the free throws. Ball State has a definite advantage here, but you've got to, the advantage is not worth anything unless you put them in the hoop. Looks better, and it is. The stalling aimed that much better at the basket, and the lead is back to six at 60 54. Five and a half to go. There's a three on the way. It's no good. Rebound to McKenna. Boy, that ball just came off strong and long. Yeah. And McKenna put it back in. Nice looking sophomore. Nice looking sophomore. Again, Tom, the Cardinals had the rebound covered, but right. that ball just bounced yeah, a lot right of high rebounds the off the tight rims. Chandler Thompson on the drive, puts it up. It doesn't go. Rebound inside to Gillis, but just tipped into McKenna's hands. See, again, a uh, little rush there on the offensive end for Ball State. A little rush. Shot is up, going to be short. Rebound to the Cardinals. Stalling again. Stalling's collecting a number of rebounds and takeaways. Spicer will bring it across. You're under that five-minute mark now. It's time to really take control of the game, run a little clock, uh, run the offense, let the offense work for you. Cardinals were in a deficit situation at halftime by two, and they lead by four. Inside to Gillis, we've got a push off on Gillis. Yeah, I was afraid of that. Yeah, he's been, he's done that a couple of times. That was a little too obvious. Had the arm up a little bit high. So that is the seventh team foul. That will put Miami at the free throw line for the one and bonus. And McKenna will go up there and try to bag a couple. He's shooting 69% on 20 of 29, so he's no slouch from the free throw line. No, they're they're very all very much about the same shooting wise. They don't uh, shoot a total team a high percentage, but uh, overall they're not too bad. That's seven out of ten is not too bad. Got to hit the first. He doesn't get uh, it, but guess what? Miami gets the, the rebound. You can't. You got to block off that line. Intercepted. Mike Spicer. Now you notice Ball State's changed their philosophy a little bit here. They're not looking to go as quickly now. When you get down to this part of the game, it, yeah, unless you really got something, there's no need to run it up and down the floor and jam it in there. Cedric Van Leer's back in for the 
Redskins. Hard pressure by Miami. Really put a lot of hard pressure. They're, they're doing a nice job on Chandler, in particular. They're really, uh, Michaels is really playing him tight. Chandler draws usually one of the toughest defensive players on any team, and they'll always play high and tight. All State needs to get a little more movement in there and, and, and set some good screens. A little back cut there by Chandler. Nice skip pass, cross court. That should be. Good assist to Thompson and good basket by Jamal Sylvester. Cardinals back up by six, 350 to go in the ball game. As we said, it's down to the wire. Michaels, McKenna, boy, has he been a monster inside. Scott, back to McKenna. He'll fire. Goodness gracious. He got a two. Unbelievable. You know, he did he showed none of that in the first half. None of it. And again, Bill's got to get out on him. I mean, he's proven himself that he can shoot it out there, so Bill's got to get out there on top of him. Well, that's what exactly uh, Dick Hunsaker was calling out to Bill Gillis. Get out there and defend. He's going to have to do it. Uh, Miami have come out with you. They're really coming out on the floor. Uh, they're doing a lot of gambling right now. They're really uh, getting some hands in their van. There that time I thought foul Stallings a couple times. 20 on the shot clock at 3.04 in the ball game. Ball State really spreading the floor out. Kind of played a semi-delay here. Just run some clock right now. Spread the ball. Nice drive by Keith. Oh, doesn't get it. What's the foul block. call? It's Got a block. block. Got a block. Stalling will go to the free throw line, and he'll have two. That's a nice job by Ball State. They spread the floor, kind of leave the middle open, and uh, let whoever can take a drive down the lane. As long as you got those two shots automatic now with the 10 free throws, not a bad uh, idea. There's a replay on that. You see Keith just kind of drive in the middle. They'd open up the middle there, and he had a pretty good angle on it. Uh, nice slice there. That could that was, that was close one. That could have been either way, but well, oh, he is out. I don't know how many free throws he's missed tonight, Orm, but it seems like he missed four or five. Stalling has been there a six. number of times. He's six he's free throws six. tonight. Yeah. He's had a bushel basket full of attempts. 62-58. It's a four-point Cardinal lead, looking to make it five, and it spins oh. out. And you know, that's, that's what I mean by mental, Al, because sometimes that plays on you. You're already thinking about all those six you missed, and Keith doesn't do that very often. That's really uncharacteristic. This ball game is far from over. They forgot about Van Leer for a second and covered up as Van Leer almost had a chance to go straight they're, in. They're doing some isolation now. They're, they're going to try to isolate. Oh, nice cut. Boy, he just Chandler went got by. beat, but Chandler oh. got no help. He got beat big time, and you're exactly right. There was no help back there. So it's 62 to 60, and the Cardinals are going to have to put some zip in the offense to maintain this lead. Well, they're going to run it a little bit again. I think they're going to uh, do the same thing. They're going to run the offense a little bit more. Because again, everything's in their favor. They have the ball. They have the lead. Mike Spicer playing just an excellent floor game, running the floor keeping control. You make Miami come out and get you, and that spreads the floor out a little bit. Gives you a little more room to drive. 13 on the shot clock, a minute 52. The Cardinals lead by two. Chandler Thompson. He'll put it up. He got it. He got a little jump move there by Chandler. Nice shot. Sometimes they let him do it, sometimes yeah, they that's don't. Right. Scoring <laughs> who's officiating the game. You can jump and come down as long as you don't hop again. Van Leer with the ball in his hands, a minute 33 to go. You can see it on the clock. Wanted an inside to Scott. A takeaway and a foul on Keith Stalling. Mm. Stalling on Scott, and that's not the guy no, to put at the free throw not line. Not the one you want up there. He's, however, he did miss, if I remember, to miss one, didn't he, Orn? Yes, uh, well, actually. Maybe, maybe a couple of them. Huh? Uh, yes. One. Oh, he are, we didn't get a vote. <laughs> okay. Well, at the end of the game, we'll announce the player of the game as the media has all... Uh, put in their ballots and we've got a timeout timeout called and Miami wants to no Ball State wants to get a chance to talk it off 64 to 60 David Scott at the free throw line for Miami 
with a one plus bonus obviously he's got to hit the first one Tom but that's not the guy you want up there no he's one of the better free throw shooters in fact he may be their best free throw shooter of all the people that play a lot so again you never know it's a pressure situation now and uh, this is a seasoned veteran up there but that doesn't guarantee them two points well the mystery is solved Thursday at 10 when inspector alien uncovers the artist in crime on mystery hope you can join us mystery Thursday night at 10 o'clock here on Channel 49 WIPB. 64 for the Cardinals and 60 for the Miami Redskins with a minute 25 remaining in the ball game. Our inaugural game and an exciting night. And Tom, this is going to be in Orange, the last time we're ever going to see the entire scorer's bench in tuxedos. <laughs> That's right. That's what right. a classy But it does group look nice, guys. doesn't it? They are right across the way I, from us. And, you know, I think uh, it's a great idea. I think they should just do that every I, game. I do, too. <laughs> I like to see Jack Covell in a tuxedo every game. <laughs> well, we sure hope you're enjoying the ball game. We know we are, and 11,500 people in here helping us kick off. A new era in Ball State Cardinal basketball as University Arena has opened for the first time to rave reviews and standing room only. Scott got number one. Pressure is on for Scott to hit it, and he's the kind of pressure player you want up at the line. Well, Al, I think we talked about this at halftime. It was a two-point ball game, and we said it was going to come right down the wire, and they sure have not disappointed us from that standpoint because there's two evenly matched ball clubs Again, this only depicts how tough the conference is going to be this year. I know Miami was picked third in the league in preseason, Ball State second. So maybe uh, for one time in the, the century, they know exactly what they're talking about. But I think the whole league this year is going to be tough. Scott sits down. Coming back in is number 23, Michael Williams. This is one of those offense-defensive move Al. You see a lot in basketball, college basketball anymore. Going on the defensive end to take Scott out. Spicer brings it down. Van Leer tried to contest it, but Spicer easily got it across. Cardinals still have the advantage. They lead by two. Well, this is a big possession. They need to come out with something. They need to come up with something on this possession. A minute and three seconds remain in the ball game. 21 on the shot clock. Cardinals not looking to go to the basket right yet. And it's taken away. Van Leer takes it away. Nice stop. nice stop by Spice and Stallings. Got back to stop Van Leer. They're and a timeout, a timeout Miami. Well, there's a six second, 6.7 second differential on the clock from the shot clock to the game clock, so that'll be interesting. Well, Chandler's old teammate <laughs> as Chandler right. looked to make a pass. Van Leer anticipated the move and took it away. Well, actually, Van Leer also kind of used Chandler on that drive down there a couple minutes ago with a nice pick. Uh, sometimes familiarity gets you in trouble. No a player's tendencies. Well, here's where we are. 47.7 seconds remain on the clock. 41 on the shot clock. Miami has the ball in their hands. Tom, you go for the last shot? Well, you know, as as here's, the, here's, a, here's the situation with Miami being such a good three-point shooting team. You know, they may they may take a look at that as an option. I'm not sure they'll go for it, but uh, they're sure not going to pass them up as we've seen all night long. They have a lot of confidence in their three-point shooting, so that's a decision you might see. Uh, I think uh, you got to look at it this way, Al. you got to give yourself some time if you miss. You don't want to, have to run the thing down too far, and then if you miss, then you don't have a chance to get back in the game. So I would be surprised if they try to use all the clock here. You know, they're going to get a good shot, tie it up, or go ahead and then play their defense and, and take their chance there. But, you know, they know Ball State's going to get it back, so why not give yourself a little bit more time in case you do come up empty-handed on this uh, possession? David Scott is back in because they want their shooters in there. Mercurio gets the ball. Cardinals on tight man-to-man. -man. Michaels cuts across. Uh, they're, they're playing to get a shot. Whenever they can get it, they're going to Van Leer will pump. He doesn't get it. Rebound to the Cardinals and a foul on Van Leer. Well, he had it. I mean, he was wide open out there, and he could have really uh, burned the Cardinals on that one. Did he foul so Spicer? Mike Spicer will go so. to the free throw line, and he'll shoot two. And this puts an incredible amount of pressure on the young man from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Well, here's the replay, and you see wide open out there. And again, Mike got good position, and Van Leer just kind of reached across there. Boy, did you watch Bill Gillis blocking out, clearing out under that basket? Yeah. He was going to take no prisoners. Spice with two. 
doesn't go. Well, I'll tell you what, the, the, <laughs> those rims are solid. <laughs> They are solid. They I are told solid. you. They were yeah. out at the fairgrounds last yeah. year. I'm sure they were <laughs> Well, they were. I'll tell you. Spicer must hit this one. Ooh. He gets the roll. Ooh, ooh. Got it up there soft that time. Got Shot the clock is off. Miami must hit a three to tie. Well, I don't think they're going to play it. They're not going to call a timeout. I don't think they, they already know what they want to do. They want uh, well, Mario I know who, or David I, Scott. I know who I'd want to. Nice job by, did he foul him? Yes, oh, he that's him. too bad. That's a great job by Jamal that time, though, trying to deny David Scott the ball. Well, Sylvester has called for it, and Scott back on the free throw line. He'll have a one and bonus. Well, you knew that's what they were going to do. I mean, let's face it, everybody in place knew they were going to go to David Scott, and that's what I would do. We've got a timeout. We're looking down at Coach Hunsaker, and he wants a timeout. Good timeout, Tom. He wants to discuss, okay, what happens? He hits two, he inbounds, you inbound, what do you do? No, really not a bad situation, actually, when you look at it. Right. Uh, you, you're, number one, you're freezing him here. Number two, you can't give them, but they can't get more than two, even though they could miss uh, the second shot and they could put it back in. But theoretically, they can't get more than two, so you still got the ball with 20 seconds to go. Uh, again, theoretically, with a one-point lead, and they're going to have to foul you. You're in a point right now, I believe, Al, that you're going to have to, if you hit free throws, you win the game. That's where we are. Here's the last and foul on replay. You can see, uh, you know, he's got good position, number 30 there, Sylvester, and, and uh, really looks like David Scott really kind of backs into him as Sylvester comes around. But in that particular scenario, they're ever, always going to protect the offensive player on that situation. But it did look like David Scott kind of backed into to Sylvester, and that's using your body, and that's just a very intelligent play by a senior leader. David Scott, really an outstanding ball player. The senior for Miami of Ohio. There, there's a Ball State booster. Look at that one. <laughs> I <laughs> hope he didn't walk over here that way. <laughs> if he did, he's in serious. Or, if he did, that red is for real. That red <laughs> is for real. That right. is sure, and it's not sun. <laughs> he's just had frostbite all over his body. That's the kind of support the Cardinals are getting and have gotten all year and for the past several years. I think it's very important right now, Al, if you remember one of the last free throw possessions, Michaels got in there and got the rebound, want to miss. Ball State really needs to concentrate on blocking people out. Scott gets number one. You can't afford to let somebody slip in that lane and put one back up on a missed shot at this point. And I'm sure that's what uh, Dick Hunsaker had a, had a chance to tell the Cardinals. Next one is up, it goes in. Cardinals will inbound, Spicer will inbound. Looking for a way, gets it in. Sylvester to Spicer. He's fouled immediately. 18.4 seconds remaining. 65-64, well, and Spice has two. They're going to make a shoot, I'm yeah, they're, they're going to, and again, I, I, that's a good play, I believe, and I think that's what you have to do. Uh, again, you know, you look at Mike Spicer. On the year, he's been <laughs> he's, good. He's only missed two free throws up to that one right there all year long, so he's an excellent free throw shooter. He hasn't shot that many shots, that's though, Warren, right. and that's yeah. one of the problems. Yeah in this scenario here but again if it was me I, and I had a kid I want to put up on the line I think I'd put my splicer there you know you got one of your senior leaders up there and uh, I, I'd just soon have him up there myself he has two tries at it he gets number one important MAC game Ball State is 0-1 in the MAC 10-3 overall Miami is 2-0 in the MAC and 9-3 overall Yes. Nothing but net. Good job, Michael. 17 seconds. Watch it on your screen. That's good, D. Van That's Leer. Good D. Chandler Thompson on it. They're going to look for a three now. Oh, stolen by oh, right. hold it, hold The it. ball game is over. It is now. And he got it fouled. Now. Did he get fouled? He yeah. did get fouled. Well, 6.3 seconds remaining. All right, Jermall. They, they selected Jermall Sylvester as the player of the game. That's How did right. they know that was going to happen? <laughs> Well, he was the spark when they brought him back. He exactly. and Chandler was the spark. No, there's no question about that. Uh, Jamal really had just kind of a lackadaisical first half, and in the second half, somebody definitely lit a fire under him, and he made a lot of things happen. He created a lot of things. Dick Hunsaker over there is the happiest person in the house, and you see just an excellent step in in front of David Scott. Yep. He knew where the ball was going to go, yeah, right. and an excellent finish here. I mean, he takes it up strong. He gets hammered, but he goes up, concentrates, he and gets the ball. He stayed right in. with it. Yeah. And here's another angle on it. You see, 
Uh, Jamal, he knew the ball, that's where the ball was going to go, but uh, did a nice job of coming down the floor under control, collects right there, goes up strong and lays it in. Just an excellent super job and by Jamal Sylvester is a lefty. You know, how many times, though, have we seen him do that this year? He, you know, he is excellent in the steal category. He can make those steals uh, and coming in from that angle. And I think sometimes the left-handed individual has an advantage there. Scott will fire up the last shot. No good. Macario did it. And they're going to let it go. And that's the end of the ball game. I was going to say, Dick Kunstaker may be the happiest person in the house. And uh, believe me, Dick and I have talked a lot. He was very concerned about this game. This is a tough road ball State has, Al. Starting off with Kent State and not playing as well as they could. They got Miami. We have to go up to Western, which is a tough team. And then back here next Wednesday night against OU. It's not an easy track, and Dick was really concerned about this. This has to be a nice impetus going up to Western. What a way to start things off in 1992 in the new unit. University Arena. It had all the atmosphere of NCAA. The team was in the ball game. The coaches were in the ball game. And I've got to give a big compliment to Dick, Dick Hunsaker. He was respectably restrained tonight. Well, and he, he did a great job of coaching. No, he, he really did. I think the coaches did a coaches did a nice job of preparation job. Uh, Al, they really did a nice job of preparing the kids tonight. Cardinals win it. A big one over Miami. 70-64. We've got post-game highlights. We've got some replays, and we've got stats all coming your way next. You're watching Cardinal Basketball on WIPB. Local production and broadcast of this sporting event is made possible in part by a grant from Ross Supermarkets Hardware and Pharmacy. Ross Supermarkets has been serving the Muncie community and Delaware County for over 65 years. Ross offers a wide selection of name brand groceries, meats, and produce. Ross Supermarket Hardware and Pharmacy. Four locations serving the community. French Tech Cleaner supports Cardinal Sports seen on WIBV 49. Under the same management for over 34 years, French Tech Cleaners provides full service cleaning and laundry services, including shirts, pants, and drapery. French Tex Cleaner, supporting public television in East Central Indiana, with four locations in Muncie, Northwest in Southway Plaza, and drive-ups at Lindenbrook and 2901 West Jackson. Wendy's Restaurants of Muncie proudly supports sporting events on WIPB 49. Wendy's features the Super Bar, the hot and cold food buffet with an international flavor, Wendy's Old Fashioned Hamburgers, plus a wide variety of food items. Wendy's Old Fashioned Hamburger Restaurants, with four locations. South Madison, West Jackson, East McGalliard, and at the Tally, on the campus of Ball State. Bassett Pontiac GMC Truck Isuzu features the 1992 line of Pontiac's GMC Trucks and Isuzu's. Also offering pre-owned cars, trucks, and RVs. Bassett is dedicated to serving the customer with a complete service department. Bassett Pontiac GMC Truck Isuzu. Committed to serving the needs of this community with quality products, quality service, and a commitment to supporting quality programs on WIPB. Welcome to Cardinal Recap, a review of tonight's Miami Ball State basketball game. Well, the Cardinals win a big one. An incredible victory, 70 for Ball State and 64 for Miami. Cardinals push their record to 11 and 3. Miami drops to 9 and 4. Tom and Orrin are happy bunch of guys and they're standing by. Thanks, Al. You know, uh, Orrin, Earl Yesingsmeyer, the former sports information director here at Ball State, just came by and he said, you know, this is a long way from Ball Gym. And I looked at Earl and I said, yeah, Earl, it's a real long way because I remember playing in Ball Gym. And I'll tell you what, we had some fantastic crowds over there. But this is just a super situation. Orrin, you can't not get a better college atmosphere than this one. Oh, you really can. And, you know, we said earlier that you really have to give the fans a great deal of credit. The lousy night outside but there was a sellout and almost all of them showed up. And what an exciting game Ball State really came to play again early. It was a tough matchup, but I think emotionally they were into it, and we really saw some aggressive, assertive play in that second half by Ball State. 
they took advantage, I think, of some Miami situations where Miami really was crashing the offensive boards and got themselves caught a few times. Ball State started getting their transition game going, and I think before Miami knew it, Ball State was really getting charged up and feeling confident about that transition game and really got them in trouble, led by Jamal Sylvester. What an outstanding job he did, particularly in the second half, Orrin. Well, you know, getting that spurt going, I think you're right, that was a big key when we were able to get them off those offensive boards and uh, we were able to get the ball out in that transition. And Sylvester, what can you say? What a great job he did. 14 points all in the second half. Fantastic defensive moves right at the point when we needed them. He really deserved to be the player of the game, I think. And I think all around, just a great defensive game. You know, Miami's an excellent defensive club. They really improved this year. Uh, but Ball State holds them to 64 points. Again, that's not too far over their defensive average. But I think it was an excellent defensive game. I just love watching the game because they were really going at one another. And Orn, uh, we have a short time here. Let's uh, take a look at the scoring leaders. Well, let's do do a quick rundown for Ball State. We have uh, Keith Stalling with 10 points, Jamal Sylvester 14 points all in that second half, Bill Gillis with seven, Chandler Thompson 15 points. Chandler, I thought, played a very good game tonight. Mike Spicer with seven, Dave Broge two, David Hall 10, Jeff Robbins uh, with five points. For Miami, their leader was Dave, was David Scott with 18 points, but Tom Leo held him to six points all in the second half. And John McKenna with 17 points. You know, we have a way of making their centers our all-career <laughs> game against us right. we, with Paul last year. Mike Williams with nine uh, and Mercurio with nine. We did a good job of keeping him from hitting those three-pointers in the Let's second half. Let's bring our cohort and crime Al Wren in here and close it out, Al. Well, I tell you, what an exciting ball game. Don't forget that we'll be on the air with the Western Michigan ball game Saturday, 2.30 from Reed Fieldhouse up in Kalamazoo. We hope you'll join us here on Channel 49. It was an exciting game, 70 for Ball State and 64 for Miami. Cardinals go to 1-1 one and one of the MAC in Miami, 2-1-1. One one. For Tom and Oren, I'm Al Rent. Thanks for joining us. Good night, everyone. This WIPB basketball telecast has been made possible in part by grants from Defer, Boran, Hanley, Radcliffe, and Reed attorneys. Knatzer, Heating and Cooling. Pizza King. Remax Realty Plus. Indiana, Michigan Power Company. Family Vision Care. Bassett Pontiac GMC Truck. Ross Supermarkets, Hardware and Pharmacy. French Tex Cleaners and Wendy's Restaurants of Muncie. Boy, I tell you what, uh, in Miami of Ohio playing in their very first game in the brand new University Arena tonight. And the final score, more good news. I'm just a bearer of good tidings tonight. Ball State wins 70 to 64 over the Redskins of Miami of Ohio. AP College top team was unveiled with a sellout crowd on hand for the ceremonies as Ball State took on Miami in their MAC opener. Mike Spicer misses. Bill Gillis is there for the tip. He will get credit for the first basket ever in University Arena, and the fans display their pleasure on the play. Chandler Thompson with the jump shot. And then Craig Michaelis will score for Miami, but it wasn't enough. Ball State opens their new arena with a big win, 70-64 to, to open MAC play. Top 25 scores tonight at halftime. Duke is leading North.